Hello everyone and peace of Christ all of you. Uh, today our topic is very important and this topic actually is going to show you that those Muhammadan they worship a God they do not know who he is. All of what they knew that his name is Allah. Even the word Allah do not know what their name means for it is a foreign word. So the name of the God they have is a stolen name from different nation. The character of this God is unknown for them. Who is this God? They have no idea. How he look like? They don't know. What he's made of? They don't know. Is he a spirit? They say no. So today we are going to discuss together and see and show you how much they are or there is embarrassment in this religion the second you start asking about this God. This God is exist only if you don't ask questions. This God is amazing, but just don't ask. The second you ask, this God is a joke. So who is this God, Allah? Believe that Allah has an arm or a leg as stated in the Quran. Uh, how can this be correct? Isn't it? This is attributing human qualities to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, subhanAllah, Brother Tahir, you just answered yourself in the beginning when you said some Muslims believe that Allah has an arm or leg as it is stated and mentioned in the Quran. So if it is stated in the Quran, what other proof do you need? <laughs> Rather, the question should be, how can we perceive these states? Number one, Allah subhanahu wa mentioned specific... Look at this now. So yes, Allah have arms, Allah have hands, Allah have legs. So why they refuse that God can be a man? And those arms and those hands and those legs, are they flying in the space or they are connected? They can't even answer you about that. And those hands and those arms and those legs are made from what? Silicone? Plasma? Gelati? They don't dare to answer that. So what kind of God we are worshipping? And why does God anyway, he have arms and legs? Listen carefully. The Muslim is saying, some Muslim say, he says to you, he says to him, yeah, well, this is what the Quran is saying. You answer yourself. The Quran confirmed that. Some Muslims believe that Allah has an arm or a leg as stated in the Quran. Uh, how can this be correct? Isn't it? This is attributing human qualities to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, subhanAllah, Brother Tahir, you just answered yourself in the beginning when you said some Muslims believe that Allah has an arm or leg as it is stated and mentioned in the Quran. So if it is stated in the Quran, what other proof do you need? Yeah, what other proof do you need? What's wrong, what's wrong with you? So a Muslim, he's trying to use his brain. Okay, see, we say to the Christians how God can be a man. And why this God, he is rejected by them. He's a man. I mean, he looked like a man. He have arms, he have hands. He have leg. Then we find that Allah Himself, He have arms and He have hands and He have fingers and He have five fingers. Not only fingers, He have five fingers. And He have two eyes. So how it's impossible for God to be a man, and that actually is the funny is, the second you say impossible for God to be a man, you just said impossible for God to be God. Because God, he can be whatever he want. The Bible says nothing is impossible with God. That is our book. Are you Muslims saying there is something impossible with God? So why you call him God? There is many things impossible for me because I am not God. But if I am God, nothing is impossible for me. So the difference between me and God, that there's millions of things, billions of things is impossible for me. With God, there's zero thing is impossible. So here you see the hypocrisy of this cult, and you see the confusion of this cult, and now he is trying to explain, now okay, we, you, you, okay, now Allah, he have hands and Allah have arms. The question is, isn't it, this is a human attribute? So what he will say, listen. Rather the question should be, how can we perceive yeah, how, these states? How we can perceive, go ahead. Number one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned specific parts, and I would mention them, and the references in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وقالت اليهود يد الله مغلولة غلت أيديهم ولعنوا بما قالوا بل يداهم مبسوطتان ينفقوا كيف أشاء <تصفيق> In this ayah without going into the details of its meaning and the reason of its revelation 
a part of the ayah in the segment he says bal yadahu ma bisutatan allah's hands are stretched out he spends generously and he, he provides spent. generously <laughs> allah allah his hand is open and he spent a lot he spent <laughs> You know, you know the stupidity is, if we accept that this God he spent, that's mean he have a currency. That's mean he is not a creator. Because a spender is somebody who have a saving, and from his saving he spent. So the second you agree that your God he spent, it's mean he is not the maker of the money, he is a spending the money. So he is not a creator. And when you say and you agree that Allah have hands and he used his hand to spend, well, you just made him a man in the market, then he put his hand in the pocket, then he pay money. He spend money. So how that can help? That make it even more confusing. Continue. Prior to what the Jews were saying that, uh, God forbid that his hands are tied up or uh, shackled to his neck, يعني, he does not spend. I don't want to say the word exactly because this is awful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala quoted the false allegation and he refuted that by saying, Bal yadahu. Doesn't only have one hand, rather two. Yadahu, dual. He has two hands. If you go to this verse, by the way, you will see not a single translation saying the word two hands. I think there's only one. They took the word to his two hands away. Okay, so now what is the answer for this person? We got it. Allah, he spent money, he have two hands, and his hands is open. And now you prove that the person there, he is wrong, and Allah have two hands, and? Are stretched out. <coughs> he spends as he wills. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the ayah stated so. In Surah Al-Qalam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in ayah number uh, 42, يَوْمَ يُكْشَفُ عَنْ سَاقٍ وَيُدْعَوْنَ إِلَى السُّجُودِ فَلَا يَسْتَطِيعُونَ In some of the tafsir and references and ahadith, the saq here refers to Allah's shin. So he has a leg and he would lay down, he would lay down uh, un uncovered or bare his shin so that people <laughs> will fall in prostration except those who <laughs> fail to prostrate in this <laughs> so we have his god this god have two hands and then the judgment day is going to disrupt these is going to show his leg so this is what you know about your god that's it that's your god mr leg the reason i am starting with this because our topic is about how Allah, he go to his throne. If we go in the Quran, we will find that there is many verses in the Quran where it says that Allah, he rose himself above the throne. Before we go to the throne, just to show you that Allah, he moved from the earth up to the heaven. The Muslims always, they try to convince the Christian that Allah is not contained inside the earth. When the Quran and the Hadith prove that all, all over place. It is he who created for you all things and here additional proof that the one who made the Quran cannot be the one they call him Allah. The author of the Quran keep talking about his God. This is not Allah talking, cannot be God who is his name is Allah talking because he should say it is me Allah who created things for you not it is he here he says in the translation he says moreover he designed and comprehend the, the heaven that's a fast translation the word in Arabic is thumma thumma mean and then after that a while after that there's a Muslim he is teach, he teach Arabic and he, he have a video just about the word thumma and he will tell you that the word thumma is used only for something that did not happen right away but after, which means there's a period of time, took long period. Thumma, if you change the translation, or translator, this is Yusuf Ali, you will see the Quran will change miraculously, as usual. 
Look what happened. He it is who created for you all that on earth. Then is Tawa, between two brackets, he rose over. Okay, he rose over toward where? Toward heaven. Okay, where he was? He was on earth. If there is any Muslim here, he have an idea how this happened? How you Muslim, you reject Jesus to be God because you say to, to us that if the flesh of the man is a flesh of a man, that's mean God is inside the flesh of the man and that's impossible. And now what is different between God is inside the flesh of the man and God is inside the earth or inside the sky or inside the cloud or inside the atmosphere? He is now in the earth. So he's contained in the space which is in the earth. He is not bigger. He is not hugging the earth. He is in the earth. And this is why it says he rose over. Now, how Allah he rose over? Remember, none of the Muslims believe that Allah have wings. Muslims, any one of you believe Allah has wings? Any Muslim in the bushes? Do Allah have wings? The answer, no. As you see, all Islamic sheikhs, they insist Allah have two hands, Allah have legs, Allah have five fingers, but there's no wings. All right. So how Allah, he rose to the sky. Do we have any Muslim can help us? Not only Allah, he rose to the sky, in different verses it says, that he rose over the throne, in the top of the throne. Is that why Allah have hands and legs, because he need to climb the big, huge throne? And now, if, as long Allah is in the top of the throne, why he is there? You see, the Bible speaks about the throne of God too. But the Bible says that the pillars of the throne of God is justice and love. There is nothing really, it's about physical throne. God do not need a throne. God in the Bible is a spirit. And why does spirit need a throne? The God of Islam is not a spirit, he's a physical being. So now we have Allah contained in the earth, as we showed you in the previous verse. He was in the earth, and then he went up to the sky. Here translation say in heaven, the fact it says a sky. The word is in Arabic is sama. As you see here. هو الذي خلق لكم ما في الأرض جميعا ثم استوى إلى السماء فسواهن سبع سماوات. So it is he who created for you everything on earth and then he left up to the sky, he rose up to the sky and he made them seven heaven or seven skies. And I don't want to talk now about the number seven which is proven again that Muhammad is a fraud. Because Muhammad is stuck with the number seven. Muhammad is a person, when he hears something, he's stuck with it. So Jesus mentioned the number seven and 70. Muhammad, he mentioned it right away and he's stuck with it. The, 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 you know, the Christians, they mentioned number three. Muhammad is stuck with number three. Everything in Islam is a theft. However, in Islam, there are seven skies and seven earth. <clears throat> and here we have another problem this is a chapter 65 verse number 12 if Allah created seven earth are they seven earth as seven plants or planets, sorry, or they are seven layers of the ground? 
if there is any Muslim have anything to say. Please refrain yourself from asking me silly questions about what do you think about this guy and that guy. We have a topic. Let us be mature adult. Are, are we talking about a topic? Who care about this guy and that guy? You give your opinion. Who care about my opinion? I'm going, going to hire him for a job or interview. I believe he's a silly, the same as the Muslims. Don't take me away from my topic, otherwise I will block your name. So, if Allah created seven heaven, and there is seven earth, where are, where are they, the seven earth? You see, the seven heaven, we can play with it. We can say, okay, we do not know uh, how many, uh, maybe seven, maybe there are galaxies, maybe they are bigger than galaxies, we don't know. So you, so you can play with that part. But when you say there is seven earth, where are they? And as long as Allah, he was when he created this, the earth, he was on the earth. So he created earth number one, and then he jumped to earth number two, and then he jumped to earth number three, and then he jumped to earth number four, and then he jumped to earth number five and six and seven, and he, when he finished creating those earths, then he went to the sky. There is something stupid in this story. Because if there are seven planets in order to go from earth number one to earth number two, well, you have to go to the sky anyway. Unless they are connected. Do you know what I'm saying? So if Allah, he created seven earth. Okay, Allah, now he created this earth. Earth number one. Now Allah is going to go and create earth number two. Okay, how he can go to earth number two? He have to jump to different location and create earth number two. Okay, now he finished earth number two. He have to jump to different location and create earth number three. Etc. But this is mean there is a problem in the story because it says that Allah He created what is in the earth all and then He went up to the sky. But isn't it the earth is in the sky? And now we have seven earth. So in order for him to go up to the sky, that's mean he have to finish all the seven first, all the seven earth. And mean he that's mean he 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 have to go to the sky first before he finish the second earth. He made the seven the, the first earth, now he's going to go to the second earth, now he's going to go to the third earth, but in order to do that, he has to jump between them. Takbir is saying, where in the earth, where it says jump, it says he, he, he rose up. This is not jumping, or tell me, flying? Give me the word, I will use it. Just to show you the hypocrisy of the Muhammadan, who tried to supposedly answer by not answering. Hey, Takbir, I don't want to use the word jump no more. I need your help. What I will use if it is not jump? Fly? Are you there? Here we go. I took a selfie for your statement. Hey, Christian Prince, where it say jump? Give me the answer. What I should say? Did he jump or he fly? Because according to your Quran, and we just prayed to the video for you, Allah have legs. He don't have wings. Correct, people? Allah have hands. He don't have wings. So, if your God have hands and legs, then how he rose up? He fly with the hands? Do your God fly with his foot? I'm waiting for your answer. Help me. I'm not going to use the word jump just because of you. That's it. I want an answer. 
Rice can be used literally. No problem. Rice can be used literally. Rice how? You see the stupid answer? Look, guys, they, they don't want you to say the word jump, but they don't want to give you the answer. How Allah he rise up? Did he fly? Did he jump? Allah don't have wings. How Allah he fly? Allah have hands. Allah have foot. So either Allah was climbing or Allah was jumping. Help me. Are you there? Here you see the stupidity of this religion. The second you ask a serious question, they are in trouble. They don't know what to say. Don't say jump. Okay, so can we say fly? He will not answer. Look at this. Look, look at him. He is searching Google. Hey, Prophet Google, help me. Did Allah jump or he fly? Maybe he swim. I'm waiting for you, Takbir. What happened to you? We just finished playing the video saying this, Allah have hands, Allah have a shin, Allah have five fingers, Allah have a foot. Wonderful. So how Allah, he climb up, he fly with the foot? If Allah flying with the foot, so why he call it foot? That's when he's calling it wrong name, should call it wing. Why do you question God? Here we go, you see the hypocrisy, you see the stupidity, you see the dummy, you see how hypocrite they are. Why you question God? It is you who question God always when it's come to Jesus. The second we question you, God, no, I question about Jesus. Why not? Ask me how Jesus he went to heaven. Ask me, I will, I will tell you. <laughs> you see, Jesus, he explained, he, even he says that he will come in the judgment day, before the judgment day, and he will come above the cloud, which means there's nothing need to carry him. Nothing need to hold him, he's God, with his angels. I'm asking you now, Allah have hands, Allah have legs, Allah, he went up. And the hypocrisy is why you question God. Well, aren't you Muslims, you question the God of the Jews, the Hindus, the Buddhas, everybody? The second we question your God, you do poo-poo. And now I'm waiting for an answer. Who is going to help us? How Allah, he go up to heaven, he jump, he fly, he swim, he use a flying carpet? They have no answer. And when the Quran says that Allah, he rose, not me, he rose. Okay. The second you say he rose, that's mean he was down. Do you agree, Muslims? I'm not going to say that he rose up unless he was down. Who wanna help me? Is that your translation? It says he rose over? He rose. Actually, let me help you. Let me help you. I will get you a genius to answer this topic. Listen to this and laugh. Ask by the Prophet, peace be upon him, about a woman to determine does she have the right belief in God. He said, where is God? And she pointed up like God. And that was sufficient. He said, this is a believer. You can get married to her or whatever the, the situation was. The point is that this was a legitimate question and this was a legitimate answer. But now I found from some other Muslims, so-called anyway, they're called the Nation of Islam. They asked me after one of our programs, they said, well, if you said Allah is up and you held your finger like this, okay, 12 hours later, the earth will rotate. So you'll be pointing the other way. Does that mean God went down, or how does that work? <laughs> huh? And right away you're going, oh. I don't think, and I'm talking about from the Hindus, the Christians, Muslims, everybody, I don't think anybody really... 12 hours after, Allah is not up anymore, Allah is down. Keep your finger up, brother. Keep your finger up. Where is Allah up? 
12 hours after Allah is down. What kind of religion this religion is? And how he answered them? He said, oh, you know, this is not, uh, this is, uh, I'm not going to answer you. Embarrassment. Okay, tell us the answer. They just told you, okay, if you say up, 12 hours after, he is down. You could keep your finger up, keep it up. Just keep it up. Huh? Hold your finger for the coming 12 hours up or take a picture for that and put it in the, in, the, in, the, in the wall as you put it so you don't keep your finger up. Take a picture of your finger up. And that's why the Muslim keep giving Allah a finger, if you remember, you know. When a person is dying, he give Allah a finger like shahada. Why? Because Allah is one and he's up, brother. So 12 hours after Allah is down. So what, we ha what happened? We flipped him down. So what do you mean by up? When Muhammad and when the Quran says he rose, rose, rose where? Hmm? Any Muslim? Is the earth flat? Yeah, this is what Muhammad he believed. That's why he believed that there is only one direction. And actually, we can support this statement with a statement coming from Muhammad himself. Muhammad he said that Allah he come down every third part of the night. Let us see the, the hadith. Read and love. The clear evidence that Muhammad is a fraud and he thinks that the earth is a flat and there is only one time zone. This is Sahih. This is Sahih Bukhari. This is Sahih Muslim. So the Muslim cannot say it's a fabricated hadith. It's very authentic. The Messenger of Allah, HBBUH, this is kind of acid and uh, you know, her, like uh, chemical stuff, said, our Lord, the blessed, the superior, comes every night down to the nearest heaven. He come where? People, he come where? He come down. Do you see the word down? So, as long as we say the word down, that means he was up. Okay, keep your finger up. <laughs> 12 hours after Allah, Allah do not need to go down after 12 hours after. You see the stupidity? Let us say Allah, he came down now. Let us say now you live in Indonesia. What is the time now in Indonesia? Now it's here 4.44 p.m. I'm assuming it's 4.44 for you a.m. in the morning or 3, something like that. So this is the time Allah will come, supposedly, 3, 3, something. Okay. All what Allah needs to do to be down again is to stay there for the coming 24 hours because you don't need to go down anywhere. But the problem here, Allah, he come down whereas the Muslims are. So Allah come down in Mecca. Let us say at uh, 3 a.m. in the morning in Mecca. And then Allah has to come down after two hours or one hour in Pakistan. And then Allah has to come down one hour more in Delhi. And then Allah has to come down one hour more in Sri Lanka. And then Allah has to come down one, two hours more in Japan. And then Allah has to come down three hours more in Indonesia or less. So how Allah keep coming down and up? Same time as you see somebody in the comment, a muted, saying, Allah come down, but Muslims say, 
he cannot enter his creation. Well, that's what we are saying, my friend. Allah, he was in the earth and then he rose up. That's mean he is between them. Right? He is inside them. And Allah coming down to the lower heaven, that's mean he passed the seven heavens. Remember, there are seven. So he's inside them again. So this is the most confused, stupid cult ever. Somebody saying all Abrahamic religion is the same. No, my friend, when you quote a verse from the Bible, you need to know that the Bible is not uh, uh, one verse. Throne of God in the Bible is started from, from the throne of God in the Quran. As an example, the Bible says, the throne of God, the pillars of the throne of God, is his justice. Does that mean there is a column of concrete of justice? Our God is a spirit. There is no need for physical throne. The throne of God in the Bible presents the authority of God, the justice of God, the love of God, and the existence of God as authority over all what he created. The throne of God in Islam is totally the opposite. It's literally a physical throne. It's literally a heavy throne. Even the interpretation says that when the angels, they tried to carry Allah throne, they could not. Allah, he had to help them. And as long as you are mentioning Isaiah, if you know a little bit about the Bible, you should say that Isaiah says that the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. So what is the throne? Based on that, everything is the throne of God. Everything for all of it belong to God. The heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Do we have any Muslim want to say anything? This is why actually in the Bible, in, the, in, in, in Matthew, uh, chapter 5 says, you know, don't take oath, not by what is up in heaven, and what, not by what is down in earth, for it is the throne of God. So the throne of God is everything in the Bible. It is the authority, for everything belongs to God. So don't take an oath of something you don't have authority over it. Do we have any Muslim want to say anything? Is the microphone bad, guys? Do you have a problem with my microphone? So here you see that how Muslims are confused about Allah. Allah have hands, Allah have legs, Allah have etc. And now we are trying to find... Where is this Allah? How this is Allah work? How Allah climbed the throne? How Allah is in the throne? They have no idea. If we go to different video, you will see how things is even getting more hilarious. This is a Muslim woman asking the Sheikh, where is Allah? And is Allah holding a physical shape? Listen and laugh. A friend of mine claims that we should not say that Allah is on the throne because it will mean that Allah holds physical space. But if Allah does not have physical existence, then it means he is just in imagination 
but, uh, that he is just an, an imagination and how can someone see an imagination whereas Allah has promised to show himself to the people of Jannah. Zainab, these issues are very sensitive. As Ahlul Sunnah... Zainab, Zainab, listen Zainab, this is very sensitive, okay? I mean Zainab, give me, give me your dad to talk to him. Zainab, if I am there, only Allah knows what I will do to you. This is very sensitive, Zainab. Be careful, Zainab, okay? Okay, so what is the answer now? Now, al jamaah as believers of the Qur'an and the Sunnah, with the understanding of the three favored generations, hmm. we do not use our logic when it comes to Allah Azza wa Jal. No, don't use your logic. We Muslims don't use our logic when it comes to Allah. We use our logic when it comes to Jesus. We use our logic when it comes to Buddha. We use our logic when it comes to atheism. We use our logic for anything. When it comes to Allah, we are bankrupt. We are out of logic. Logic. I mean, have you ever heard of a stupid religion like this? If you don't use your logic when it comes to your God, you use your logic when it comes to who? This is your God. Hey Muslims, I have a news for you. We Muslims, we don't use logic, our logic when it's come to God, okay? We borrow the logic of the Chinese, made in China. So you, you will use the logic of who? How you will understand your God? Do you know, does, does this guy even know what logic mean? <laughs> you don't choose what? Uh, that he is just an, an imagination and how can someone see an imagination whereas Allah has promised to show himself to the people of Jannah? Zainab, these issues are very sensitive. Very. As Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, as believers of the Quran and the Sunnah with the understanding of the three favored generations, three favored, three. we do not use our logic when it comes to Allah Azza wa hmm. So when it comes to Allah's beautiful names and attributes, we do not say that this is logical, this is not logical. How can we say this? How can this happen? This is unacceptable. Unacceptable. We did not see Allah Azza wa hmm. And Allah cannot be imagined. Oof, 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 oof. So now anyone, he come to us, he says to us, oh, oh, my God cannot be imagined. That's it. We have to believe in that he have a God. Okay, tell me about your God. Well, you cannot use any logic when you talk about my God, okay? Oh, okay. So your God is all-knowing, but yet he thinks the sperm coming from the backbone of the man and the ribs of the woman. You see, he knew that, but this is wrong scientifically. No problem. I just told you, don't use your logic. Cool. So which logic we will use? Uh, tell me more about your God. Allah have uh, two hands. Okay, why Allah have two hands? Do Allah use them to do things? Yes, He used them. He spent money on them. I showed you the video saying that. What's wrong with you? And Allah, He built the earth with His hands. Okay. And He built the sky with His hands. Don't cry. Okay, take it easy. Don't be too much emotional. Do you want tissue? So Allah, He built the earth and the sky with His two hands. So why do you call Him God? Because obviously you have to use hands. Your God, he go to the kitchen. He have his own laboratory, which is wonderful. Then he put zucchini with tukini and mix it with burkini. And then we got Burkina Faso. Oh, we have a new country. Allah created a country, it's called Burkina Faso. But he used his hands. So when the Quran says Allah, if you want the same something to, to, to be, he say be as it was, it was a lie. Because Allah, he used his hands to do things. He didn't say be. When Allah created Adam, he did not say be. He used his hand to create Adam. He mixed mud. He fashioned the mud. And then he used his mouth and he breathed. And hey Muslims, how Allah he breathed. 
Is he like have a body of Jesus, like a man, like Jesus? When Allah he says, I breathe into her, to Mary, or breathe into him, Adam, he breathed from where? He have like a balloon inside him and there's something inside it? So, when, when the Muhammad and they speak about their God, the first thing they say to you, don't imagine. Okay, we, we got that one. And don't ask, what the heck? So we can't imagine and we can't ask. So how we will know about this God? And how we will accept this God? And now this guy is going to show this girl that he is a knowledgeable person. Look what he will say to her. Now, <laughs> as believers of the Qur'an and the Sunnah with mm. the understanding of the three favored generations, we do not use our logic when it comes to Allah Azza wa Jalla. No, we don't. So when it comes to Allah's beautiful names and attributes, we do not say that this is logical, this is not logical. How can we say this? How can this happen? This is unacceptable. Unacceptable. We did not see Allah Azza wa Jal. Okay. And Allah cannot be imagined. Cannot be imagined. So how dare someone ask a question <coughs> or deny... How dare you? How dare you to ask that question? So after all this speech, the answer is how dare you to ask such a question? This is the only way to preserve the ass of Allah. Otherwise, the ass of Allah will get spanked. Don't ask about the size of his ass. Don't touch his ass. Don't talk about his ass. And don't imagine his ass. How dare you? See, this is the benefit of the internet. Because God knows what will happen to this girl if she said that question in person. How dare you? So what we will do now? What is the answer? Say something from the Quran and the Sunnah. This is exactly your friend, what he's doing. This is exactly what the Jahmiyyah did when they <coughs> made all the names and attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal without any value. So Allah Azza wa Jal is all hearing, but he doesn't hear. How is that? Allah Azza, they made Allah exactly as they define vacuum so when they wanted to describe allah they said allah is not up allah is not down allah is not in front allah is not back allah is not on the right allah is not in the left allah does if you want to describe something that does not exist it would fit as a glove and this is wrong now as ahlu sunnah wal jama'ah we only believe in the names and attributes that Allah had told us about them in the Quran or that the Prophet himself Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us about in the Sunnah. That's it. No one can come out of the blue and say that Wallah, Allah's beautiful name is so-and-so. Where did you get this name from? Quran Sunnah said no. So then this is unacceptable. Likewise, when you come to talk about Allah Azza wa Jal does not hold a physical space. The issue of holding a physical space was not told to us, neither in the Quran nor the Sunnah. So when you say such a statement, we have to know exactly what do you mean. If you mean that Allah Azza wa Jal does not exist, like the Jahmiyyah has explained, and that he is nowhere, nothing, and, and, and the likes, all negative attributes. In this case, no, this is wrong. We know that Allah Azza wa Jal exists. We know that Allah Azza wa Jal is above his throne, and his throne is the ceiling of, the, uh, of paradise, and that Allah is above all, and Allah is in the height. In Arabic, we say, fis sama. Fis sama does not mean in the heavens, <laughs> because nothing can... Uh, uh, surround Allah Azza wa Jal. See, look, look at the stupidity. Even they wanna, they wanna, they wanna break the Arabic language. The, the letter fi or the tool fi uh, in Arabic mean in. 
as simple as that so now even when Allah he says he is in they want to say he's not in so what is he this is the same guy who he said that Allah have a hand he have a shin so as long he have hands he have a shin he have a leg he have a face or well, they need a location they need a physical space are they real or fictions are they virtual or they are real all the Muslims agree that they are real so how what your answer now is about because he cannot answer he cannot say anything he cannot say well Allah did not say if he have physical space or not what we know Allah have hands yeah but this is mean Allah you have physical space going back to the verse in the Quran where it says Allah he rose above his throne Muslims why Allah he rose above the throne any Muslim very simple question I want a decent Muslim to give me a decent answer Allah he finished creating the earth and the heaven that's wonderful now he went to the throne why Anyone? How Allah he rose over the throne? See, we asked the guy his name Takbir until now he did not give us an answer. I don't know what happened to him, he disappeared. Takbir, are you there? How Allah he climbed to the throne? Allah he went up, it says there rose, and then it says over. So now is up and over together the throne made the location of Allah wonderful why Allah he need a throne see we showed you that in the Bible it says it clearly that the throne of God is earth and heaven and everything for everything belong to him this is why in Matthew it says clearly that the Lord he said I say to you, don't take an oath at all, neither by heaven, or like what is in heaven, or what in earth. Why? Because this is the throne of God. Any Muslim can help us? How Allah he went up? Do Allah have wings? If you say to me Allah do not need wings, then why Allah he need hands? If you say to me he do not need hands, why he have them? If you say to me, Allah do not need foot, why he have it? And why he call it foot? If you say Allah don't have fingers, why he have it? And why he call it fingers, if they are not fingers? Or what the Muslim keep repeating to you, saying to you, Allah, brother, nothing like Allah. Nothing like Allah, we got that, or who care about nothing like Allah? There's nothing like mosquito too. Nothing like Allah. Let us say we killed all the mosquitoes in the world and we have only one mosquito left. Does that mean this is Allah? And even this nothing like God is a statement Muhammad he stole from the Old Testament. But when the Holy, Holy Book says nothing like God, he doesn't then talk about the look of God. He talk about nothing, nothing to compare to him when it's come to his ability, his power, his authority, and he is the creator. So that's it. 
nothing like him. But the Muslims, they use that statement always to run away from explaining how Allah and who is Allah and how he look like. Do we have any Muslim who tell us and help us how Allah he climbed the throne? Oh, this is not Allah. I, this is by, I'm sorry, guys. This picture is by mistake. I thought it's Allah turned to be something else. But anyway, I mean, Muslims, where is Allah? Why Allah in the top of the throne? How he climbed the throne? How he went down to up to sit in the throne? Do he feel better when he is up on the throne? Is he tired? Is he sitting to rest? Any Muhammadan? Allah don't have wings. See, the Quran says that angels have wings. Okay, wonderful. So angels, they fly. Okay, they have wings. I wonder he's copying which book. You can think about it. For everything in the Quran is is a theft. But when the Quran steals stuff, the Quran make it more horrible. As an example, anyone remember uh, how many wings Jibreel he have? Anyone remember? <clears throat> how many wings Jibreel he have? Who wanna help me with the number? Anyone? How many wings Jibreel he has? <clears throat> 600. Muslims, how many wings the angels they have according to the Quran? Any Muslim? Who is a Muslim when he help us? Muhammad, he saw Jibreel with 600 wings. Was Muhammad seeing really Jibreel? or something else. I'm waiting for the Muslims to give us an answer. Anyone? What happened to those uh, takbir and uh, what happened? Pray with me and love. Praise be to Allah. Okay, who's talking Allah? Have you ever heard of a God? He said, praise be to Allah. Obviously, this is a book written by somebody praising his God. This is, cannot be God himself saying that. This is very silly. This is very silly. Praise be to Allah. Who? Okay, who? It's not you. Remember, the one who's talking is Allah, supposedly. Who created the heaven and the earth between two brackets out of nothing. This does not exist in the verse. Who made the angels messengers with wings. Two or three or four. But what the heck? So how Muhammad, he saw Jibreel with 600 wings.
Do we have any Muhammadan can tell us how Muhammad got himself busted? I mean, this guy Muhammad, he is so fufu, he is so potato, he is so tomato, he is so hummus, to the point he cannot maintain his life for a second. In his book, in his Quran, he says, angels, they have only either two or three or four pairs. In the Hadith, he saw Jibreel with 600 wings. So how big the lie is? How many wings Muhammad he added? Any Muhammadan? How the Quran says there are two pairs or three or four or, 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 or three or four? Okay, wonderful. So how Muhammad he saw the guy with six hundred wings? And by the way, in the verse in the Quran does not even say pairs. Nowhere the word pairs is mentioned. That is a false translation. It says three, two, and the three and four. This is why you see here between two brackets he put pairs. Because it's going to be funny to say that he have three wings. But this is what it says in Arabic. It says, مَثْنَا وَثَلَاثْ وَرُبَاعْ this is the same statement actually used in chapter uh, uh, in the chapter of the, the women about marrying women or having the nukah to women to, to F them. F2 and the 3 and 4. Mathna with a lot or a bar. So angels have 2 and 3 and 4. Okay, let us go back to the topic. Angels have 2, 3, 4 uh, wings and supposedly they fly with them. I'm not going to question that scientifically. Forget, you know. That's not really the purpose. Allah, he went up to the heaven by what? Angels have wings. Allah have hands. Allah have foot. Allah have five fingers. How he went up to heaven? Any Muhammadan? <clears throat> the Arabic translated is a feather feathers not wings who said that to you no the word in Arabic here ajniha it is not feather ajniha is wings even the Muslim translation used the word wings Any Muhammadan, he can help us. By levitation, that is a good answer, guys. By levitation, well, what does that mean? By levitation, it says he went up. See, Allah did not bring the sky down to him to be in the top of it. <laughs> I mean, all the story is, is, is really is a, is, a, is a silly story because if Allah is God <coughs> and he can create anything he wants without moving anywhere, why he need to go down of his throne anyway? Any Muslim? If you want to have an answer and have a debate with a scholar like Zakir Naik, don't remind me, Zakir Naik is the biggest idiot if in Islam history. This guy, he said that the word Hur is a woman and men. This is a scholar. Go watch the video and die laughing. The word Hur is a men and women. So you Muslim, you are going to have sex with men. This is your scholar. So when Allah, he promised you Hur. He promised you, you, a man, you will have sex with a man. But isn't it the Quran says that those Hur Nobody made them bleed by losing their virginity, losing their skin or the vagina. So how does Chipet Zakarnaik, your scholar, he says such a thing? 
If I want to show you what Zyker Naik is saying, you will die laughing. But you know, Zyker Naik is a genius in front of the fool. Go watch the video and die laughing. And there's 10,000 watching, 10,000 idiot. Nobody says to him, what are you talking about? How the whore are, are men? Google sitter. The word whore is a plural word. It's for me and the female. Like, what the heck? It's for men and female. Are you sure, Abdul? Here, Abdul, the one who is watching Zakir Naik, not a single one of you, he decided to get him busted. Are you submissive to him? Now his religion is not your religion no more. So you accept the person, he changed everything in your religion and suddenly the whore became male and female and you Muslims are going to F male? Is it your Quran here saying that Mufahunna has opened their humans with sexual intercourse? So how the donkey Zakana says it is male and female? Actually, I wish that Zakir Naik would dare to speak to me for f 15 minutes, 5 minutes, 5 seconds. I will make him shish kebab. He's already shish kebab for me. I think the video name was... <clears throat> uh, like a woman, she asked him how, how many, why the man will get ver, uh, whore. Let us see if I can find it. It's there. Yeah, well, <clears throat> we need to find it so we can laugh. Uh, let's see. Here we go. We got the Abdul. You want to watch and love? <laughs> so my mom made me Christian. She taught me what she could. But I still don't know what Let us go, to go. Sister said that the father was a Muslim. Okay, go, go. To my mother. The middle of a Christian. Go to the question. Poor, that beautiful woman, what will the woman get? The same question was asked to Hazrat Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, who is the wife of the Prophet. So the wife of the Prophet replied that the woman will get that which your heart hasn't desired, what your eyes hasn't seen, what your ear hasn't heard about. That means, inshallah, you will get something equal. <laughs> what your heart hasn't desired, what your eyes hasn't seen, what your ear hasn't heard. So in Hey, hey girl, you will get a lot of F in there. A lot of men, they will F you. You will get the same sister. <laughs> yes, your dad will get a woman to F them. A lot of women, you will be F too. Allahu Akbar. Get your vagina ready. Inshallah, if you go to heaven, yeah. you will get something good, which inshallah, you will be satisfied. Uh -huh. but the question is, first you have to enter heaven. Yeah. If you don't enter heaven, you won't. Okay, if you, the question is, in order for your vagina to get all this effing, are you, are you going to go to heaven first? <laughs> I don't know if this is the same video or not. Let me move it a little bit. If you speak about the whore. Nowhere does the Bible say that Jesus is God. Oh, here we go. She's asking about whore. Nowhere in the Bible says that Jesus is God. When all the Bible says that Jesus is God, from the first page, Look at this coward. 
Let us see where the answer. Bible says. And here we go. Bible says. Maybe this is not the video. Chapter 15, verse number 26, in the Gospel of John, chapter number. Uh, yeah, maybe this is not the this is not the video about the word whore. I think this is a newer video. I think since then he did not dare to say it, you know, because people they get him busted says to him, that is a stupid statement. Let us see here. Okay. Yeah, maybe this one, hold on. A companion or a spouse, it has no gender. A <coughs> means a companion or a spouse, it has no gender. For the, the similar thing is mentioned. As Azwaj al Mutaharin, many places in the Quran, in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 25, and Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 57, it says Azwaj al Mutaharatun, which means companion, pairs. So the word hur is rightly translated by Muhammad Asad as spouse and also by Abdullah Yusuf Ali. Abdullah Yusuf Ali as companions. So hur actually means a companion or a spouse. It has no gender. For the man, he will get a good... <laughs> Did you hear it? The word hur has no gender. <laughs> They call him a scholar. Let me give you the. He can give you a link so you can download it. And maybe the one who will uh, copy my video now, he can cut this part and make it by itself. I mean, this donkey. Every single Muslim knew that the whore are females, and there's the Quran says that, the Hadith says that. According to this donkey, who the Muslim, but at that time, he, you know, he's a stupid. I mean, he's a growing by name. You know, he became famous because he memorized things, right? But he's a stupid. He don't know what he's talking about. And since then, you'll notice now the same question been asked by this, the girl, the video the, uh, we showed you before it, which is a new video. He did not say the same answer no more. Because obviously somebody told you, you idiot, what are you talking about? But now they cannot take the video down. Who has no gender? Zach and Naik, you idiot, you donkey, you potato. What if I was there in the stage and you were debating me and you say that? How many people will die laughing at you? Huh? How many? And the funny, he says, the translation of, of uh, 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 Asad, what translation he said? Let me go back, hold on. Because I want to show you the translation of those guys he mentioned. Where is Zach and Nay? Cute Zach and Nay. Let us see a translation he mentioned, hold on. Azwajun Mutaharatun, which means companion, pairs. So the word Hur is rightly translated by Muhammad Asad as spouse and also by Abdullah Yusuf Ali. Yusuf Ali, he translated as a spouse? Okay, I will go to Yusuf Ali. Hold on. <laughs> This is you, Sarah. <laughs> like what? It says there's no men or genie touch them, you idiot. No men, no men. Do you see the word no men? This is Yosef Ali. There's no men or genie touch them. The translation here, by the way, is false because this is not, nothing to do with the touch. It's about effing them. The word effing. The word here is used, yat mithahunna, is exactly as the previous translation was saying, is making do, make them lose the skin inside their vagina, as you see, because of intercourse. This is the guy you call him a scholar? You want to play my game? Why did your God made angels with six wings and feet? Well, you see, you, you, until, until now, the Muslims, they have no idea what we're talking about. 
I'm showing you a contradiction. Your prophet says he saw an angel with 600 wings, and this is the only angel he saw. When the Quran says the angels of Allah either have two wings, or sorry, one, uh, two wings, or three wings, or four wings. You see how stupid you are? If your prophet said that the angels of God, he saw, has 600 wings, and then the Quran says that the angel of Allah either have two or three or four wings. That's mean Muhammad, he did not see an angel of Allah. So all this time you are searching Google to tell me that uh, the Bible says that they have, uh, angels have uh, wings, stupid. This is not what we are showing you. Because either Allah is telling the truth or Muhammad telling the truth. They can't be both telling the truth. So when Muhammad he saw an angel with 600 wings, those, this angel belonged to who? Are you there, Takbir? The idiot who keeps searching in Google. After two hours, you come to me with this? So this is what you got from my topic now? That I am making fun of the angels have wings? My topic is, Allah don't have wings, I go up. Until now, I'm waiting for your answer. Not, you said to me, don't say jump. I said to you, what? how, how we go up? You did not dare to answer. We say the angels have wings, Allah have no wings. And even the angels of, <laughs> of Allah, either they have two or three or four wings. So how Muhammad he saw an angel with 600 wings and his name is Jibreel? The only solution that Jibreel, he went to Thailand and he added uh, extra, you know, in Thailand, they make you male, female. They add cushion to your ass, make you a female. They make boobs for you. Whatever you want to add, they can add for you. You want to add a LED in your nipples, they add it there. Did Jibreel go to Thailand and they did that to him? Because Allah, he sent him either with two wings or three wings or four wings. Jibreel arrived to Muhammad with 600. Like, what happened? Do you think he used fertilizer? I think it's a fertilizer. I think he got like a fertilizer from Home Depot. You know, it take him 1,000 years to calm down. So Allah, he put two wings there. And you know, those two wings, they start like fertilizing. You know, like uh, Jibreel, he do like poopoo -poo, and the poopoo -poo come in his wings and they start growing and growing everywhere like weeds, you know? So they became 600. And now look, he is, he, he got dead, he not, he's not answering. So going back to our topic, how Allah, he climbed the throne. Until now, no Muslim can tell us. And why Allah, he went in the top of the throne? as long as it's a physical throne. And how Allah can be contained in a throne? And how Allah can be carried by a throne? And how the throne of Allah is carried by eight angels? <clears throat> he went to Mexico. I used to have a a Mexican neighbor, he threw garbage in my garbage can. I told him, uh, my friend, you cannot do that. Don't do that. He said to me, Basura, Basura. I don't know, I don't speak English, uh, Spanish. So I, I thought this is his name. I said, Mr. Basura, you cannot throw garbage in my can. Throw it in yours. Where's yours? He said, Basura, Basura. He don't speak English. I said, Mr. Basura, listen to me. You cannot throw garbage here. This is my... Basura, Basura, like what the heck with this Basura thing? Okay, I get it, your name is Basura, I know. Why you keep repeating? And then a guy was walking by, he said, no, Basura, he is saying to you, Basura mean garbage. Said, oh, okay. So we will. This is what happened to you when you speak languages and you are an Arab, you know, like, <laughs> I thought Basura is, a, is his name. <laughs> anyway, after some time, this guy, he starts learning English, and each time he walks in front of me, he says, Basura! <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> when the other guy translated to him, he said he thought your name is Basura, so he died laughing. <laughs>
I know, I know about Surah Azgar. You know, once I went to, uh, let us take a break from the, from the garbage of Muhammad. One, once I went to vacation and I went to an open buffet, you know. So there's a guy in the front of me and his wife with him. And he pointed his finger at the dish and he said, uh, Ponita. I, I, I took the same food. I love it. It was tasty. I thought this is the name of the dish. So second day, I came to the same restaurant. The waitress, she come to me and I said to her, Ponita. She laughed and she turned her face. She did not even, like she didn't say anything like you want something else. Like what happened? Anyway, she left. And then she walked by again. I said, well, it's my Ponita. She laughed again, like, okay, you know. And then she went, she spoke to her friend behind the counter and she came back with the paper, have a phone number. Like, what the heck? I asked for a dish. She's giving me a phone number. Then I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. Where is, so a waiter, a waiter, he came and he said, hey man, everybody came after me. Where's my, uh, you know, where is my dish? He said, you know, they have like once a week, they have a buffet, the rest of the week, they have normal restaurant. He said, what, what, what you order, sir? I said, Punita. He said, we don't have a, something or such a thing. Punita means beautiful. So the genius me was a fl flirting with the waitress without knowing. <laughs> She thought I'm flirty with her. I said to her, you're beautiful. <laughs> so she gave me her phone number. Unbelievable. Yeah. <clears throat> and I told him, no, man, I wasn't, I wasn't ordering. <laughs> Ponita. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> hey, Muslims, any Ponita around? The Prophet was so Ponita. There's a video, actually, of Mufti Mink speaking about how the Prophet Muhammad was so ponita. Not Allah only so ponita, Allah Muhammad is so ponita. <clears throat> I don't know, I, I think <coughs> maybe he's Mufti Mink, I forgot. Uh, Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad description. Maybe it's not Mufti Mink. Mink. Well, who is this guy? I don't know this guy. Yeah, I think this is not Mufti. I always, uh, you know, um, uh, give uh, give a uh, wrong uh, name for this guy. <clears throat> so, brother and sisters, Prophet Muhammad was the most sexy ponita ever, brother. And the back background music. His eyelashes were long, and in his voice was a natural echo. Were long, and his eyelashes were long, and in his voice was a natural echo. And his neck was elegantly long, his beard was full and thick. Azaj, Akran, his eyebrows were arced, but they were not joined. Oh, brother, we got it. He was so ponita. Please don't mention that in San Francisco because your prophet, he is going to have a lot of hump there. I mean, aren't you worried? Have you ever heard of a religion like this? Music in the background. The Prophet, his eyelash is so long, his belly bone is so hard, his ass is round, his ears is so good to be licked, his cheek is so good to be touched, his lips is so good to... <coughs> his tongue, <laughs> like what the heck is this? Are we talking about a Prophet of God or a prostitute? It was separated in summit when he was silent, dignity covered. I have a hadith about his fault. I don't know if this is what you are talking about. The, the second Muhammad he mute because he's he's squeezing himself. <laughs> Him. That's it. And when he spoke, it was audible in This is why the, the Arab they keep laughing at him when he talk. This is why, according to you Muslims, he spent most of his life, nobody convert to Islam. As long as all those things about him, how them, I mean, if he had those things, the women alone in the town, they will believe in him. If Muhammad had those things, every single woman in the town, she will believe in him just to get him.
a prophet, I will believe in you, you marry me, huh? Mm -hmm. I mean, think about it. I mean, this guy is, he's not a human. His voice, his voice have echo. Brothers and sisters, 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 sisters. Today we are going to talk about Mr. Echo, Echo, okay, Mr. Bean, 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 Bean. The difference between Mr. Echo and Mr. Bean, 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 because Bean, Bean can be cooked, but Mr. Echo cannot be cooked, 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 but we can be heard, 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 heard. Today we are going to talk about Allah, 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 and the Echo, reason for the Echo is the bathroom, room, room, room. For it's empty, there's no furniture, furniture, furniture. The prophet, he have a lot of echo because he's a drum, 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 drum. He's empty from inside, side, side, side. And everyone, like the prophet, cannot have an echo, 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 because only the prophet is an echo wish. Wish, 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 wish. His sound have an echo? His voice have an echo? They don't worship Muhammad, they worship Allah. What else? Clear, almost commanding and overtaking. Ajmal and Nas wa abhahum min ba'id. From afar, the most striking and outstanding in appearance. You see, in Arabic, he says Ajmal, the most beautiful, but in translation, he did not say the word Ajmal. Why? Coward potato. He's so beautiful. Ahsanuhum wa ajmaluhum min qareeb And when he came near the best of them And the most handsome of them in closeness Hulwul mantiq But I want to show you the, the point when a guy he was walking at night And you see this guy now later he will cry He's crying like you know because it's so good bro So good So there's a guy he was coming And then he it was dark time Look look they put They, put, uh, they will put for you now in the background the moon Huh? He says, I came out one night, uh, in, oh. I came out one night, it was the full moon night. Full moon. Look, 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 look how emotional he is. Look, he cannot even talk about it. But come on. I mean, if I am your place, I will not even able to open my mouth, brother. Look, he, look, look, he's squeezing himself. Did you notice? Did you see the act? Did you see the act, the movie? He can't even talk no more like... Look, like, what I will say. Look, 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 look. And I looked at the moon and in the desert understand the moon is, is an awesome sight. It is smooth. It is radiant. It is clear. It is gentle compared to the scorching sun at which they are used to. So the moon was the epitome of beauty. So he says, I came out at a full moon night and I looked at the, at the moon and I saw it beautiful, handsome. So I said, let me go see if the moon is more handsome or my prophet is more handsome. I have to prove a point. I'm going to look at the moon. I'm going to look at the prophet. And I want to see who is going to beat who. Today, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, we have a competition of Mrs. Beauty of the Sky, Moon versus Muhammad. Guess who will win? I mean, it's hard to guess. I mean, like, come on. Because they are so close. I mean, like, we have a moon and we have a Muhammad. And now, okay, now the moon will come with the bikini. Okay, Mrs. Moon now wearing bikini, and now Mrs. Okay, Moon. Uh, Moon now wearing now yellow bikini, and uh, Moon is walking by. Uh, okay, Moon almost fell down because he has wearing high heels. So Moon, he lost one point. And now we have Mrs. Muhammad. Awesome. Let me see if that is more beautiful or the prophet is more beautiful. So I went and I saw him standing afar. So I looked at his face. And I looked at the moon and I look at his face and I look at the moon. I look at his face and I look at the moon and I look at his face and I look at the moon and I look at his face and I look at the moon and I look at the face and I look at his moon. Like what's wrong with you, Muslims? I mean, aren't you even ashamed of this stupidity? So this guy was flipping his head left and right, up and down for 20, 15, 30 minutes. Look at that thing. Like, what's happening here? This is too much action, man. 
out at the full moon night and I looked at the, at the moon and I saw it beautiful handsome so I said let me go see if the moon is more handsome or my prophet is more handsome let me see if you know you know what you are safe and secure because you live in different country if you say that you see guys did he say let me see if how dare you to say if for sure the prophet is better did this guy stay alive after he said the word if hey Muslim did you let him live he said if I mean can you even imagine he wanted to see if the moon is better if how you allow that where is the mujahideen where is the peaceful religion the guy he said if the prophet is if the moon is better or the, if there's no if here for sure the prophet stupid idiot you made me cry now <laughs> that is more beautiful or the prophet is more beautiful so i went and i saw him standing afar so i looked at his face and I looked at the moon, and I looked at his face, and I looked at the moon, and I looked at his face. Hold on, hold on. He was a little bit far. So do we have a flashlight? So how he saw him in the dark? Ah, the face of the prophet is radiant, you know? Raise red, red, radiation. Red. <laughs> so the prophet was a little far. So he looked at the face of the prophet. He still can see it. Okay, for sure, the prophet, his face is shiny. So I look at the face, I look at the prophet, I look at the face, I look at the finger, look, look at this finger. Muhammad is there. He's giving Muhammad a finger. Don't do that. Standing afar. So I looked at his face, and I looked at the moon, and I looked at his face, and I looked at the moon, and I looked at his face, and I looked at the moon. Okay, guys, uh, tomorrow we will continue the program. We look at the face and we look at the moon. And tomorrow our topic will be, we look at the face and we look at the moon, we look at... <laughs> Man worshippers, cowards. This is how they make him a prophet. You see, they don't spend their God, their time speaking about their God, how beautiful he is, because they don't know how their God look like. And now they fabricated stories about a man, how good looking he is. Well, if he is good looking, so why the father of Khadija refused to marry her to him? If he is very good, he is the best in ethic, he is the best looking, and yet the father of Khadija almost, he went to kill him. Anyone knows how Khadija she married Muhammad? Who knows how Khadija she married Muhammad? Remember, we are changing topic now because not even a Muslim, once a Muslim can tell us how Allah climbed the, the throne. They don't know. Stupid religion, cult. We waited all this time, nobody is answering. How Khadija she married Muhammad? If I tell you that Khadija, she is a fraud, and Muhammad is a fraud, and Khadija and Muhammad, they did a conspiracy against the father of Khadija, they made him drunk. Imagine the ethical prophet in order to marry Khadija. They made the father drunk. And you believe it or not, this is written in their books. How in the world this man can be good anyway? Imagine a person, he want to marry your daughter and you don't agree. So what you do? He make you drunk. He dress you your suit in the morning. You wake up, you say to him, you say to you, why I'm wearing my suit? They even lie. They said to him, oh, yesterday you married me to Muhammad. Like what? I did not do that. He did not. The guy, he did not. But they just want, to, want him to believe that when he was drunk, he did it. The guy he wasn't convinced. And then Khadija she said to him, Well, do you want the people to know that you are a stupid idiot and your daughter did that to you?
and this is the hadith and this is from al bidaya and al nihaya and you can use google translation and this is mentioned in many places she made her father drunk this is the filthy Muhammad and the filthy Khadija. Even their life started by a scam and a fraud. A woman, she made her father drunk. And then after she said to him, this is what happened when you're drunk. He said, I'm going to kill him. I will never accept that. They fabricated tons of lies about Muhammad to make him look like a good person. But their book says the opposite. Any Muslim is going to say to me, this is not true? There is no such a story? If there is such a story or not? A fraud who started his life by a fraud, how he end to be a prophet. Anyone? So today we could not really get an answer for how Allah he climbed his throne. We found a lot of contradictions. We found that Muslims, they have no idea who is their God. We found that the Muslims, they say that Allah is up, but 12 hours later, Allah is down. We found that no Muslim can answer anything. And we found that Allah is a joke. And until now, I'm waiting for a Muslim who is willing to call me. I will open my pal talk if there's anyone. He can tell me how Allah, he climbed the throne. If there is any Muslim here, he can do so. If there is any Muslim, can tell us how Allah he climbed his throne. And why Allah he sat on the throne anyway? What exactly is the purpose of his throne? The Bible speaks about the throne, but the throne of God is heaven and earth God he says sky is my throne and earth is my footstool which means everywhere is my throne everywhere is my authority Allah he sat on the throne he climbed the throne his throne is physical and he is physical what Allah he did by sitting there and what he accomplished how he climbed there Oh, this is Trump? You know what? I don't know. I thought it's Allah. <laughs> I don't know. Like, guys, I'm getting old. Honestly, I search like I search in, in Google, uh, Allah throne. Honestly, I search for Allah throne. I got a Trump. Unbelievable, man. What's wrong with Google? You, we, we search for Allah throne. We find the Trump. I don't know, Trump is real, Allah is not. <clears throat> Prove me wrong. Any Mohammedan?
Well, if you think about it. Yes, Trump, he have two hands. Uh, Allah have two hands. The difference is Allah, he have two hands in the right side of his shoulder. You remember that, right? I mean, even, even this God, even his hands is in, in, in the wrong location. He have a defect. <clears throat> Both his hands are right. Unbelievable. Look at this. I mean, who, how in the world you Christian don't want to worship such a God who have two hands, both of them, they are right. Isn't it fantastic? <clears throat> By the way, when I was born, my mom, she said to me, that I used to have two right hands. And uh, they were wondering like, why? I mean, why? Why I got two hands on the right side? Why, why, why? Anyway, they woke up second day in the morning, they found my two right hand in the left side. Like, what the heck? They switch. So every day I wake up in the morning, I find sometimes they are in the right side, sometimes in the left side, and I like, like I put my uh, I put the watch in the right hand. Then I find my right hand in the le in the in the left side. Like what the heck? And I was so upset. You know, this is a true story, by the way. Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Bukhari. I mean, why you people don't believe in it? What's wrong with you? How come if I tell a story, it is really strange, crazy story? But if Muhammad says his God has two hands and both are right hands, nobody wonder why. Hey Muslims, why Allah have two hands on the right side? I mean, is that a birth defect? Should we make a surgery? Can't Allah fix himself? And as long both his hand in the right side, is, is Allah his right, uh, is, is right uh, person? Like he walk in the right direction, don't go left? So if I want to shake hand with Allah, I, if, I, okay, if I can, okay, hold on. Let us say that this is Allah. <clears throat> Hold on. Okay, I found another picture for Allah. This is not Allah. What the heck? This is Trump again. Okay, so let us say that this is Allah. And now both his hand are in the right side. So this is, will be the right for me in my screen here, will be this area. So this is the hands of Allah. He have two hands. Okay, we will erase the other hands. So now if I come from this direction and I hit Allah, he cannot respond to me because his hands in the other side. <laughs> <clears throat> you have two right hands okay I'm convinced so is Trump unbelievable do we have any uh, Muhammad I want to say anything like, look now, we put the, the picture of Trump, the liberals will go crazy. Pelosi will have a heart attack. She will call YouTube. And, and Joe Biden, he will say, uh, 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 YouTube, there's a channel by the guy's name, you know the thing, you know, you know the, the thing, what's his name? You know the, the thing, uh, like, okay, but the name of the channel, where he have uh, the picture of Trump, the, your enemy. Uh, you, uh, okay, you, uh, you know, uh, we are created all, like, you know, by the, uh, the thing, you know? So, you know, they put it uh, like, okay, but who, who's this guy? Where we can find him? Uh, you, you know the thing, you know the thing, okay? Th th thank you. And this is exactly the Muslim respond to us when we speak about their God. You know the thing. Who is Allah? You know the thing. 
Who, how dare you to ask the question? How dare you? This is how we answer a question. How dare you? Whoa. How dare you? How, how, what? how dare you? That he is just an, an imagination. <clears throat> and how can someone see an imagination whereas Allah has promised to show himself to the people of Jannah. Zainab, these issues are very sensitive. Sensitive, sister. As Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, as... Uh, you know, as Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, supposedly they are the best of the Muslims, Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Sunnah is those who follow the steps of the Prophet, supposedly. But be careful with that, my friend. None of them follow the steps of the Prophet. As an example, the Prophet, he forbid them from doing anything the Western people do or the Christians do or the Jews do. And look at them. They use internet, they use TV, and they have cell phones. And even they dress like Western, most of them. Same time, they live in Islamic countries and those who live in non-Muslim country, they pay tax to the kuffar. And this is forbidden Islam. All of them, they have TV. All of them, they watch movies. And all of them, they have porn. And all of them, they are Sunnah. Ah, the Prophet, he used to watch porn too. He have different way. He have real women. He do not need. He kidnap women from their houses and he raped them. So we are the people of the Sunnah. We are the people of Sunnah and Maja'ah. Believers of the Quran and the Sunnah with the understanding of the three favored generations, we do not use our logic when it comes to Allah Azza wa We don't use our logic. So when it comes to... Okay, hold on. We don't use Muslim, we don't use our logic when it's come to Allah. Uh, hey, Trump. What do you, what's, what say you? What say you? Like, okay, the Muslims, they don't use their logic when it's come to their, can we use logic of Trump? Hey, Trump, what do you think? Make America great again. Okay, Trump, we're talking about Allah. Make America great again. Okay, uh, Trump. Okay, we, tr listen, Trump. This is serious. We're talking about religion now. What is your logic about Allah? Make America Trump again, uh, uh, great again. What? We don't use our logic, so use the logic of who? Which logic? You don't use the logic of, you, you don't use your logic, so you don't use any logic. Yeah, we don't use our logic. This is Allah. When it's come to Allah, just don't ask, don't question, don't imagine. Just take it as it is. As big as poo-poo as it can be. What sawajal? I don't know what sawajal is. I know you are, you are quoting the wrong word. There's no such a thing, Sawajal. Uh, look at this guy. This guy is even better. This guy is even more hilarious. You know? Allah? Allah? Where is Allah? Where is Allah? He will tell you where is Allah. He talks about himself. But we don't say it's going to be like my hand. Does he have knuckles? Does he have fingerprint? What is that? What do you? Is it got a face? You got eyebrows? Yeah. Why do you want to do that? Why do you do that? You want to play, okay? This is not something to play with. This is you're talking about your creator. If he says something in his book, okay, accept that. And if you don't understand it, go to your scholars and ask them. Okay, and you are a scholar. I know you are saying to them, don't ask. <laughs> And the funny, those converters, they, you know, they, they convert and they, they like it because they get the attention, they have salary. Both of them, they used to be homeless. They have no jobs, nobody care for them. And now they take them to conferences, they take them around the world, big salary, they live like kings, they became superstars. They go everywhere, they wait for them in the airport, five stars hotels, and they make lecturers. And none of them, he knows what he's talking about.
Hur ser du göra det? How many videos I have here? Uh, this is the guy about the hands. Uh, this is the guy about the hands too. Uh, this is the guy about the prophet. I mean, where is those people coming from? Kind of women pray in public place. <laughs> I mean, guys, if you see what YouTube show me in the side, I don't, I don't even think about the topic when I go live. Usually, uh, YouTube suggests things for me, and I die laughing when I say, "Can a woman pray in public?" No, brother, she cannot. But she can, but she can give her boobs. Yeah, but she cannot pray in public, brother. Haram, because she will bend over and people will see her ass. Can you prove that Allah is the moon god? Yeah, we can prove it so easy. Are you a Muslim? The Quran says that Allah, the Arab, they believe Allah, have three daughters. Allat, Al-Uzza, wa Manat, Uthrat, Al-Ukhra. Okay. Go read the story about them. You will see that those people believe that the sun god married from the moon god and they have three daughters. That's it. Otherwise, Muslim need to explain to us how the Arab they come to a conclusion and believe that Allah have three daughters. Everything have a reason, correct? Everything have a reason. Okay, the Arab, all the Arab, with no exception, all of them believe that Allah have three daughters. From who? Are you getting my point? From who? This is the story of the moon god marrying from the sun god. And they have three daughters. Very simple. The moon god is not the moon, by the way. <clears throat> like I saw a silly person, his name is James White. They said, a person asked him, do the Muslim worship the moon god? He says, the Quran says, don't worship the moon. That's because he's a donkey. The moon god is not the moon. There's God who is controlled of the moon, and God who is in control of the sun. And they are in competition. Those who live in cold areas, they worship the sun god, for it is cold. So they dream about the sun coming. Those who live in the desert, like the Arab, and the Middle Eastern, most of them, they worship the moon god, for it is desert, it's hot, and moon, as you see the guy was describing for you, I look at the moon, I look at the, he was describing how nice the moon is, why? Because the Arab, they hate the sun, it is the one who killed their grass, it's the one who killed their animals, it is the one who killed them with a drought, and they have no water. So, the moon god and the sun god, they get married, they have three daughters. And I challenge any Muslim to tell me how the Arab and all the Arab, they worship a God, his name is Allah, he have a three daughters. Where is this coming from? Same time, if we go to different chapter in the Quran, we will find that Ibrahim, according to Muhammad, he called the son, Hada Rabbi Hada Akbar. Chapter 6. Verse number 75, 76, 77, 78. So Abraham, when the night covered the darkness, he saw a Kaukab. Kaukab is a planet, it's not really a star. He said, This is my God. Here he did not use Akbar, he did not he used this is my Lord. Okay, Hada Rabbi. Then when he saw the moon rising, he said, this is my Lord. But when he saw the sun, he said, this is Akbar. Do you see it? They translated the word Akbar as a greater. How come he called the sun greater or Akbar, according to translation? Why? For that is the popular name of the sun. Akbar. This is why the Muslims, they say, Allahu Akbar. For Muhammad, he unified the gods of the Arabian Peninsula. 
there's Allah and there's Akbar they have sex together and they have three daughters your God is one Allah Akbar this is why the Muslim when they say they say Allahu Akbar who in Arabic mean end we have tons of proofs what about if we go to the star verse actually no let us go to a different one hold on if we go to chapter uh, uh, Yasin chapter 36 this one alone is enough to prove to us the whole story look with me now read with me the verse carefully Ya Sin Sin Ya is an old Aramaic Egyptian word mean God Ya is a word mean God whatever name come after it is the name of that God God Sin go right now and search in Google Sin God or God Sin what you will find it is the moon god you see it you ask the muslims what does that mean they say to you god knows best what he meant by this <laughs> Now, can you believe it? And not only that, in different interpretation, they give you their own, they start like trying to find an answer, and they admit that this is a Syriac word. But isn't it the Quran says, Allah, he said, we made the Quran an Arabic book? Syriac language. And it's true, it's from the Syriac language. Sin is the moon god, which is the Syriac long, long, long time ago. They used to believe and to worship the people of the Babylon, the people of Assyria, the people of the Akkad, the people of uh, Mesopotamia, the, Ch the Chaldean, the Assyrian. very well-known God, very ancient. This is why you see in the old art or old, uh, let's say ancient uh, 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 drawing or art, you will see always the moon in their drawing. For the ruler, he ruled by the moon God power. And they have this God, he have three daughters, as you see in the screen. You see, those are the three daughters of Allah. So, is it strange that the Quran says Allah have three daughters, according to the Arab, and those people, they have a God, he's the moon God, he have three daughters too? And not to mention the chapter of an Najm, verse number one. Who is swearing here? By who? When the cousin of Muhammad, he said to him, I'm not going to believe in the God of the star. Muhammad he said to him, aren't you afraid that the, the dog of Allah will eat you? Who is the God of the star? Muslims, who is the God of the star? And which star we are talking about? 
Any Muslim can tell us? It is a specific star or a specific planet. Any Muslim can help us? You'll find the answer for this in chapter 53, verse number 49. Do you see it? Do you see it? So who is this God? Who is the Lord of who? Sirius? And even in the translation they say to you, He is the Lord of a star, the Arab pagan they used to worship. Can you believe it? Why Allah saying He is the Lord of the star? He want to prove that He is higher authority? But you just said you are his Lord, so he's true. <laughs> See, if I say to you that I am the Lord of this star, and you are worshipping that star, I'm saying to you, worship it, I am his Lord. He present me. Actually, one of the names of Muhammad, they used to call him Abu Kapsha. I know like I don't talk about those things usually but you see as usual you have uh, <clears throat> uh, always there is a reason to say things so you have you have like let's say the information is in the shelf you have to give me a reason to pick up the book or the memory any Muslim here? Why they come? Why they call him Abu Kapsha? Ibn Abi Kapsha. You go to the history, you will see that Kapsha is not really a name of a person. Even they saw it's a person who used to take care of Muhammad. But there's more than that. Maybe a different time we will talk about this topic. Actually, if you go to the same chapter here we are reading and you read the interpretation uh, of like uh, al baghawi as an example uh, or you go to uh, al qurtubi you will see that people they call him Abu Kapsha because simply uh, he worshipping a god who present that name In the Muslim interpretation, they say to you, oh no, they call him this way because there's a guy who don't agree with them about worshipping this star, and his name is Abu Kapsha, so they call him Abu Kapsha too. And this is how, they can, how confused they are. And you know, the Muslims, they have uh, the moon sign in the top of their mosque, and nobody can explain to us why, then you have a moon. Even when the Quran speak about fasting the month of Ramadan. Fasting the month of Ramadan. The, no, where in the Quran says fast the month of Ramadan. 
it says fast the moon of Ramadan here chapter 2 verse number 185 you will see the Muslim saying the month of Ramadan but nowhere the word month is mentioned they will say to you no it says the word month for this is the word shahr but this is how the word is used today the word shahr is not even an Arabic word the word shahr is a moon so the moon of Ramadan this is why if you go actually in the same translation you will see it says if you change this one the word month with the word moon which is the accurate you can go by the way even in the Hebrew the word shahr in Hebrew is moon so in the moon of Ramadan which was revealed the Quran okay so this is when Muhammad received the Quran guidance for mankind no problem all right so whoever of you cite the word what cite what cite the moon you cannot sign the month see here translation is showing you how stupid the translator he used the word month but the verse is speaking about citing that thing you have to see it and then between two brackets they say to you the crescent moon do you see it do you see what i'm talking about you cannot cite the month you cite the moon so the word shahar here never mentioned the word here is the word as i mean sorry the word month is not mentioned what is mentioned is the word shahar which is a word mean the moon so whoever of you cite the moon now here the question is okay well the muslims they are the same as the jews they have a they have the calendar of the moon but why when you cite a certain moon a moon called Ramadan that moon is where you fast and that moon is where Allah is in the Quran you see both of them they happen or Allah he chose according to the Quran that the same moon where Allah is in the Quran is the same moon which is called Ramadan the same the moon the same moon you fast and when you sight the moon you fast So it is not a calendar, it is sighting of a moon. So why? Because the Quran believe that there is 12 moon for Allah. Allah have a 12 moons. Ramadan is one of them. <clears throat> debate me while you are scared Joseph I'm really scared I don't know what to do I thank you Joseph please see here the number of moons in the sight of Allah not months this is how translation is a 12 moon which moon the Muslim they have to fast is the moon they sight it's called Ramadan and where the Muslim they get that from? They get it from the Sabi, and the Sabi and they believe that every month there is a new moon. It's not the same moon. And the moon of Ramadan is the one who appear in certain time in the year, and then they go and they welcome him second year in different city. Let's say he land in Los Angeles, and then he fly in San Diego. When he talk about the moon god, but you don't mention it because you are scared from the truth. He was in the land of Cyrus. Ah, okay. Very good. Now, when this guy, by the way, he say things to you like the guy in the text, don't think he's a crazy. He's just a stupid fool. Believing in some stories, Muslim they say, and they are confused. According to some Shia, they say, that Muhammad Allah he sent him in a journey for 12,000 years and in this year this 12,000 years journey in a boat 
The prophet, he sweat 124,000 drop of sweat. And from every sweat, Allah created the prophet. And if there's a Muslim want to say this is not true, I can show you the reference, no problem. So how many moon to Allah? 12 moon. Uh, <clears throat> this is why Muhammad, he refused the behavior of the Arab. The Arab, they understand very well that their calendar, the moon calendar, is wrong. So what they do? They change uh, they add one month <clears throat> to their calendar every three years. Do we have any Muslim want to say anything? So the, the Arab, they used to be smart, you know, not as many they try to make, you know, make you believe. That's why they refused Muhammad. And Muhammad, he did not convince them, he, con he conquered them. That's why if you go in the Quran, you will see it says, an -nasi, which is what? Which is an additional month the Arab, they used to add to their year. And Muhammad, he forbid them from doing that, said this is a sign of kufr. Why? Because the year for Allah is a 12 moon. Those people are adding one more moon. Do you see it? This is a chapter 9, verse number 37. Show the reference about Cyprus. You show what you are the one who mentioned it. <laughs> Get out of here, Betito. So there was so the difference about Cyprus. Your prophet is everywhere. Your prophet was found in China too, Betito. So uh, <clears throat> Abu Kapsha was an ancestor of the prophet who worshipped series of star hands pagans used to make Muhammad. Remember, you worship God of, you know, yeah, there's many stories about it, you know, depend, depend who is the one telling the story. You know, the funny here, uh, Tammy, you are saying that Muhammad, you worship God, but the Muslims agree that all those people, they worship Allah anyway. So the interpretation of those Muslims is a fabrication. And let me show you. Give me a second. If you go right now in the Quran, you will see the word Mushrikeen. The second you say Mushrikeen, you admit that they worship Allah. Do you see it? The Muslim he translate the, the word as disbeliever. The fact this is not true. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, they translated as mushrikeen, a uh, disbeliever. But the disbelievers are not exist in the verse. Mushrikeen is those who worship Allah and they worship someone beside him, or they take uh, uh, someone to intercede for him. And all the Arab they believe in Allah, and they ask intercessor to intercede to Allah that's all so when those Muslims they give the interpretation saying that this guy he was an ancestor of Muhammad and he used to worship uh, uh, the star or he will worship the Sun or the moon or the star series whatever and then you don't worship him that's a lie because even that one he was worshiping Allah that's why they are called Mushrikeen Mushrikeen is not people who believe in different God 
That's not true. Actually, I can show you a video. Let me search for it. About this. And you will see that the Mushrikeen, they believe exactly in what the Muslim believe. All of them, they worship Allah. All those who live in Mecca, they worship Allah, with no exception. Uh, <clears throat> I'm just searching for the video. Give me a second. <clears throat> And sometimes you know you find the video right away sometimes it takes time because you need to remember exactly the same the exact title of the video to find it um. <clears throat> okay hold on All right, here we go. I found the video. Listen and love. You Muslims and the Kuffar are the same thing. Both of you worshiping Allah. All of you are a slave of Allah. The difference is you switch from the daughters of Allah as an intercessor to Muhammad. Both of you are mushrikeen is the opinion that invoking the saints it is haram and it is evil and it is an evil innovation a religious innovation a bid'ah and it is a stepping stone to shirk it is opening the doors to shirk but it is not shirk in and of itself unless that action is accompanied by a belief that you're calling out to a God. It is accompanied by a belief that you are deifying that entity that you are uh, calling. So invoking is considered to be shirk on the day of judgment. And this is what the Prophet said as a But they invoke Muhammad. Did you see? Invoking, and he will say in Arabic, Invoking is a worship, but they invoke Muhammad. Invoking, making dua is worship, not See? a form of worship. No, <laughs> is worship. This is the hadith of the Prophet. Do not take knowledge from the likes of me or the likes of him. Take knowledge from real scholars. So you are a scumbag, right? So don't take it from him. Ah, don't take it from you. So why you are talking? I mean, this is stupidity. Don't take knowledge from someone like me or someone like him. Take it from your scholar. So why you are there? You are what? You are fake? After market? This quote unquote renowned scholar, he's a da'i. He does not qualify to be a scholar. He's a student of knowledge. Brother Nawaz from India. He emails a very lengthy question describing uh, certain issues that are going on in his uh, area and his district. Uh, and uh, mentioning some of the sectarian problems that are happening in his homeland. Uh, but in particular, there's a question that is of very relevance to us. And he mentions that in his particular town, uh, the majority of people uh, follow a interpretation of Islam uh, in which they are encouraged to uh, visit the graves and to invoke the saints for their, for their needs. And he is saying that recently he has come across a new, you know, scholar, a new, he has not heard of this, you know, new group and he mentions it by name. And he has benefited from this group and online and whatnot. And this new group is saying that 
the practices of his culture and of his people are actually shirk. And that uh, anybody who does uh, these types of practices of invoking the saints is in fact committing shirk. So now he is emailing me uh, asking that he has heard a number of my lectures and now what does he do because his family and his entire society uh, is involved in these uh, rulings. But today's topic is to call out and say, Ya Ali Madad, Ya Abdul Qadir Al Jilani, Ya Rasul. Let us go to the important thing for me in this video. Look what he was saying. Knowledge from the likes of me or the likes. Uh, commercial. Commercial. Let us skip the commercial. Hold on. And you will see he described for you that the Muslim and the Mushrikeen, they are worshipping the same religion. Both are the same. Pagan. Scholars. <clears throat> this quote-unquote renowned scholar, he's a da'i. He does not qualify to be a scholar. He's a student of knowledge. So there are so many of us. We are fortunate to be famous because Allah has blessed us with this gift and after that with the media. Had it not been to Peace TV, Huda TV, Zat TV, Islam Channel, Iqra, etc. Yeah. and the social media, nobody would have known anything, known anything about us. Mm. Well, what is the question? Let us go to, to what he speak about the Mushrikeen. With us and he beated us. So the man says, we follow him. He said, my son, the religion of Allah is one. And I see that you keep on hopping from one religion to the other. This is not Islam. So those who adopt for all, most of their life a particular opinion, then they change to a second opinion. Well, give them some time and they will change to a third opinion. Yeah, but this is what Muhammad do. He, uh, he allow muta, he forbid muta, he haram muta. He make a verse says, in the case of murder, free for free, women for women, slave for slave. Second day he changed his mind. Uh, there's tons, uh, everything Muhammad he said in the beginning, he changed it later and then he forbid it and then he allow it. Then, exactly what he's saying. Stupid people, fake people, they change their mind in two seconds. Are these people worthy of being followed in matters of aqidah? No, we cannot. Definitely not. No. Now. Mehwish said, like how Allah he allow muta and then he forbid muta and then he allow muta and then he forbid muta. He just said the truth for you. Those who change their mind about religion and about the orders of Allah, can, should we follow them? No way. As that he says that it's permissible. I doubt he says it's permissible. I would suggest or presume that he said it is not shirk, but it is prohibited. Because if he says that it is permissible, then he would have gone to the dark side, which is the super Sufis who believe and worship truly the graved people. But he thinks that it's a sinful thing, but it's not shirk. And why would someone say that? Nowadays, we are in an era where people compromise their religion. So in order to gather as many people around us and to gather as many followers being a tolerant. Let us go. I want, I want the answer about his, about the Mishrakeen. The vast majority of them, of the people, the inhabitants of earth would not believe in Allah except while committing shirk. See? What is their belief in Allah Azza wa Jal? Hmm. It's the same belief of the pagans and the idol worshippers. Exactly. Are you serious? Yeah. yeah. The pagans and the idol worshippers used to believe. Used to believe that Allah is the provider. That Allah... Are you there? The one who asked me the question? Do you see what the, the one who said that uh, this guy he was from the ancestor of Muhammad and he used to worship the front God? No, he was not. No, that's not true. It's the same God. All the Arab of Quraysh, they worship the same God, Allah. And he just said to you, you heard it. Worshippers.
Are you serious? Yeah. The pagans and the idol worshippers used to believe. Used to believe that Allah is the provider, that Allah is the giver of life and death, that Allah is the creator, See? that Allah is the facilitator of their affairs. <laughs> it's all over the Quran. If you read the Quran, don't look to scholars so and so different with scholars so and so. Go to the sources. The Quran says to us in black and white that pagans and idol worshippers believed in Allah. Do you see it? Where's the guy who said to me, they, you know, they, this is, was the ancestor. This is a false interpretation. They try to, to, to save the, the ass of Muhammad from being spanked. But all the Quran say clearly that the Arab, they worship a God. His name is Allah. The rest is a company. They are just intercessor. So, sorry, they, are in, uh, they do intercede. That's it. So, and the funny, the Muslims, they say those are pagans. And they worship what? They worship Allah. How they are pagan and worship Allah? They are pagan because Islam is a pagan religion. When you will open my pal talk, I can open it for you, my friend Ahmed. Are you a Muslim? Are you a Muslim? Ahmad Karim, are you a Muslim, my friend? If you want to talk to me, I will open Pal Talk for you now. What is that? Oh. Are you there? Okay, let me open Pal Talk for you. Go ahead. Give me a second. <clears throat> Even though I was planning to go, but no problem. <coughs> Text me in Palto. <coughs> I'm logging in. What's your name, my friend? What's your name in Pal Talk? Text me, just say something. I am in Pal Talk right now. Are you there? You are, you are the one whose name Cabo? Are you the one whose name is Cabo? Hey Ahmed, you know, give me your, what is your name in Pal Talk? Ah, okay. You are saying to me, hi, I am here, Mr. Israel? Ah, okay. It says you are not online. Come online, come online. You are away. He, he sent me a text saying, hey, hey Mr. Israel. <laughs> you are away. It says you are not online. <clears throat> come online. Cabo. I'm waiting. It says you need to update your software. Are you using a storing software? See, I called you more than three times. It says call rejected. Do you see it? And you want to talk about Israel? No problem. 
Call me. You will have fun. But you need to fix your Peltor first. Any brave Muslim? If you have a computer, you better use your computer. <coughs> look, guys, look, look what he says. Look, look. This is who they are. Look. Ahmad Karim. You are a kid, debate me, you effing idiot Christian boy. <laughs> I think your mama, she gave birth to you in the bar. She was doing muta. This is why your your mouth is very dirty. Is that the mouth of your mama or the mouth of your baba? Where do you learn those words? Is that what you, you know, family speak inside your house? Still, I will call you just for the sake of fun. Uh, it says, call is rejected, son of muta. Get lost. Faithy coward. Okay, I'm a Muslim, let us see. Well, all of them, they are using installing software, I think. Use your computer to talk to me, not your phone. Uh, come online. Each Muslim... You know, they text me, each Muslim I call it, it says call rejected. Hmm. A person saying to me, CP, please answer me. Do I need to make a donation to answer me? And no, my friend, all those people who I'm answering right now, nobody make donation. I'm not Muhammad. But if you want to ask me, don't ask me in Pal Talk. We have a chat. You are not different. Those who make donation and those who don't make donation, all of them, they are here, and I answer them. And actually, sometimes even those who make donation, they get blocked. Uh, why my video my phone call deleted nothing is deleted we delete all my videos but always you can find you can search the, the same title you will find it in different channel um, okay this is a person who is leaving islam very good All right, we look like we don't have anyone. Uh, do we have any Muslim? Anyone? Final request. Anyone? <clears throat> Do we have any brave Muslim would like to call me? I open my pal talk. Do we have anyone? Don't use bad language. 
And this guy, Ahmad, just to block him. He, he, he have a filthy mouth. Anyone will respond to him with filthy words, I will block you too. Don't go filthy, don't go low. If he is filthy, keep yourself up. Any brave Muhammadan. So as you see, the Muhammadan and the, and, the, and the Arab, the pagan Arab, they worship the same God. All of them, they worship the same God. Is the facilitator of their affairs. It's all over the Quran. If you read the Quran, don't look to scholars so-and-so different with scholars so-and-so. Go yeah. to the sources. Right. The books of the Salaf, they <clears throat> reported that Imam Malik ibn Anas was approached by a man of the people of innovation. So he said, stop, Imam, let me debate with you. So Imam Malik had some time on his. Somebody asking what asha wa jalla. There's no such a word. You know, copy the word in Arabic for me and give it to me. And this is this is funny. What asha wa jalla? What does that mean? In which are which language is that? Those Muslims are funny. They post things online. It's stupid. What asha wa jalla? This is gibberish. Asha wa jalla. Uh, uh, free time. So he said, "Okay, then what?" So the man says, if I beat you in my argument, in debate, you follow me. And if I don't beat you and you beat me, I follow you. So Imam Malik says, okay, let's assume I followed you and you beated me. Then we both met someone who debated with us and he beated us. So the man says, we follow him. He said, my son, the religion of Allah is one. Hmm. And I see that you keep on hopping from one religion to the other. What does this have to do with the, the topic? If you, if I prove you wrong, you follow me. If you prove me wrong, I follow you, which means I follow your religion. The answer is, my, my son, the religion is one. What is that? Suppose this is the genius talking. Any Mohammedan have anything to say? If this uh, this guy with the filthy mouth still texting, block him, please. Can you please explain the background of the two Jewish rabbis, Abdullah ibn Salam and Abdullah uh, ibn, yeah, from the Medina? There is a Jewish name, Abdil, but never Abdullah. See, all those names are fabricated names. There's nothing called Abdullah. You go right now and search. You can go your own search. Go to Google and search for people who they change their name after converting to Islam from the companion. You will see that tons of people, they, their names is Muhammad. But there is nobody called himself Muhammad. Those are names are changed later. As an example, when you when the Muslim they say to you, uh, Muhammad, he have an uncle. His name is Abu Talib. Hmm? Why they say his name is Abu Talib? What is his name? Any Muslim can tell us? Why they say Abu Talib? Do we have any Muslim here? His real name is Abdul Manaf. One of the idols around the Kaaba. So they deleted the name because that is an insult to Muhammad. And nobody say his name no more. They say Abu Talib, Abu Talib. But his name is the slave of Manaf. This is how they are.
हेलो हेलो आर यू देयर आर यू देयर ओके इज नॉट टॉकिंग चेक योर माइक्रोफोन आई विल कॉल यू बैक आई विल गिव यू अ मिनट और टू टू चेक योर माइक्रोफोन You can go to the setting and check your setting for microphone. <clears throat> All right. Let me try again. <coughs> Hello. I don't hear you. Are you there? Obviously, he's playing. Uh, welcome to Serbia. Yeah, hey, I would love to go to Serbia. Maybe next summer. You never know. Azza wa Jal. You mean Azza wa Jal? You know, uh, uh, like you know, when you glorify somebody, this is what they say about Allah. So he have. Uh, as he have like a, uh, he have uh, let us say how I translate the word as uh, uh, he is higher in 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 uh, an honor and he is uh, respected. It's something like this to English. <clears throat> Okay, my friend, fix the microphone fast because I'm not going to stay here forever. Just to let you know. <coughs> All right, do you hear me now? I don't hear you still. I don't hear you. Um, well, when one of them he speak suddenly he like I mean even his microphone doesn't work. Why Muhammad marry so many women if Islam allow only four? Because he's a prophet, a prophet. He he created a religion to fit with his penis. His penis is higher than Allah. A Muslim they can have up to four, but Muhammad penis is way honorable. There is a special religion created for Muhammad. There is a religion created for Muslims, and there is a religion created for Muhammad only. I will call you one more time, my friend. If you don't answer, I'm going to block you. All right? Just last time. Thank you, my friend from Armenia. I would love to go to. All right. Oh, well, still I don't hear you. Take care. I'm not going to call you anymore. And I will block your name. Well, if you were here a few, I mean, a half hour ago, we talk about Ramadan. So go back in the video, and you can go back. Ramadan is something the Muslim they took from the Sabian. The Sabian are people who worship stars, and they have angels who they are creators, and there's ranks for those creators. So there's stars, there's creators, there's angels, and uh, Muhammad he took Ramadan from them. Actually, most of the religion of Islam is coming from the Sabian. Uh, the Sabian they worship the moon god too. This is why the Sabian they hate the god of the Jews, Adonai. In their book, they call Adonai the evil god. 
the evil God who told his people to do circumcision. This is what the Sabi and they believe. So Muhammad, he, uh, he associated with them and even the Arab, they called him a Sabian. And he was a Sabian. Uh, but Muhammad was everything. Muhammad, when he go and sit with the Jews, he tried to be a Jew. He's like Obama. He's a politician. So with the Jew, he's a Jew. With the, with the, with the Christian, he's a Christian. With the Sabian, he's a Sabian. With the pagan, he's a pagan. This is why you see in the Quran that one day Muhammad, he's, he claimed uh, when he received the satanic verses. What the satanic verses is, he bowed down to the idols, the three daughters of Allah, and he says their intercession is a must. Why Muhammad do such a thing? The Muslim, they say to you that shaitan, he throw in his mouth those words when he is not aware. Who is going to believe in such a garbage? Like I go live on air and I start saying to you, worship the three daughters of Allah when I am supposedly against them. How that can happen? How shaitan can put those words in my mouth? And not only that, the story says that he bowed down and they bowed down with him. So the coward, there was those people around him and he wanted them to believe in him so they bow down to the idols I will bow down nobody will see me but then the news is spread that he bowed down and then Muhammad he claimed that those the, those words he did not even notice he said them it is shaitan who throw them in his mouth and he come with this verse as you see right <laughs> son of Muta, son of Yasser Arafat let Yasser Arafat help you his wife she took the money and she ran away to Europe Jihad Allahu Akbar Jihad <laughs> when he died his prostitute wife she took all the money of the Mujahideen. <laughs> uh, prostitute like Aisha. Uh, why Muslim consider Muhammad the 25th prophet? Well, they don't consider him the 25th prophet. They consider that there's in the Quran, there's 25 prophet and he is the last one who came. But he's not the last, but he's not the 25th. The Quran mentioned 25, so he is the last of the 25 are mentioned in the Quran. But the Muslim believe there's 124,000 prophets. In the same time, when the Muslim they say Muhammad is the last prophet, there's nowhere in the Quran it says that. You see that those uh, Muhammadan, they don't understand their book. All what the Quran says, it says Khatim, Khatim. Khatim is not the last one. Khatim is a ring, is a stamp. So he is the one who confirmed all the prophets before him. Nowhere it says he is the last prophet. See, even the translation says, and the seal of the prophet. Okay, what seal we are talking about? He confirmed what the prophets before him, they brought. This is why you see here it says, مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا مَعْهُمْ He's confirming what is with them. Which is that? The Torah and the Injil. That is the seal we are talking about. So bring your book. I, I accept it. I confirm it. I stamp it. So when they are come to them, to the Jews and to the Christians, the Quran from Allah, confirming what is with them. You see it? What Muhammad did? He confirmed it. That is a seal. Nowhere in the Quran it says he is the last prophet. Nowhere. That is their stupidity of answering their book. The Muslims are disconnected with their religion. The word in mean khatim, that's false. The word khatim mean a ring and a stamp. The kings, they used to have their stamp in their rings in old days. So they, they go to an artist who draw a stamp like a signature their signature on a ring so when they make an agreement they bring ink he put his ring and he stamped the document that is what khatim 
This is why when you want to go to the government in the Middle East or you speak Arabic, you say khidm. What does that mean? A stamp. Stamp on the paper. This is what khatim means. So you have a wrong understanding. And you know, the, the, to prove that this is false understanding, if Muhammad is the last prophet, well, Jesus is coming back, according to Muslims. Correct? And according to Muslims, Jesus is a prophet. So how Muhammad is the last prophet and then Jesus is coming back? Correct? If Muhammad is the last prophet, then Jesus shall not come back after him. There's nobody shall come after him. Because he's the last prophet. But yet, there's a prophet will come, according to them. His name is Isa. So he's not the last one. Do Muhammad have a son? In Muhammad, he have zero children. Muhammad, he have zero children. All those stories about Muhammad have four daughters, uh, 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 the slave she gave birth to Ibrahim. This is all fabrication. Muhammad is a potent man. That's why there's a verse in the Quran speaking about that uh, a person, he said to him, you are cut off. He's cut off. He have no children. And the Quran says, Muhammad, he was not the father of any of your children. Or your men. So when you see those people, they claim they are from the grand grandsons, like I saw one from Indonesia claim to be from the grandsons. It's a business scam. The king of Jordan, he is from the grandsons of Muhammad, as they claim. Al Qazafi from the grandsons of Muhammad. Saddam Hussein from the grandsons of Muhammad. The king of Morocco from the grandsons of Muhammad. Every scumbag in the world, he made himself from the grandsons of Muhammad so he can rule. And if you go right now, you search for the grandsons of Muhammad in YouTube, you will see a video about people, a bunch of people, all of them are blonde. All of them are blonde. Redhead. But as you see, the Quran itself confirmed that Muhammad was not the father of any of your men. So Ali don't belong. I mean, the children of Ali don't belong to Muhammad because if Muhammad was not the father of any of their men, well, isn't he the grandfather? That makes him a father. You see, Adam is our father. He don't have to be my father, the one who married my mother. Correct? So, if Muhammad is the father of the grandsons of Ali because he married his daughter, well then, Muhammad is a father of those men, but obviously he's not. Yeah, I'm not joking. All, all the grandsons of Muhammad, according to them, you know, they, they, they worship white people, you know. So if I go right now and I search, you will see scary faces. Look at this. Those are the grandsons of Muhammad. Find me one person of them, he is not so white, not so blonde. Look at this. A bunch of red-haired people. All those are the grandsons of Muhammad. Look at this guy. He claimed to be the grandson of Muhammad too. Redhead. Scam. It's a scam. You know? Let us see where more we can find the grandsons. It is a video. Let us, let us see where are the grandsons of Muhammad. Look at those three. What a business. Great business. Grandsons of Muhammad. The best scam ever.
even the Muslim they made the, the Queen of England Elizabeth she is related to Muhammad <laughs> oh well, it's, it's a big scam uh, I forgot the name of the video you know you would die laughing let me change the name Prophet Muhammad Grand Sons I know for some reason I cannot find that video you, you see that video you will die laughing Yeah, all of them they are redhead blonde very blonde people very white and actually they are so white to the point I'm like what is that yeah because Muhammad he cannot have grandsons they are not so white like hello I cannot find the video I don't know where it is Let me see if I can find it in Arabic. Hold on. Here we go. <laughs> but this one showing girls, showing kids. I don't want to show kids. Let me see if I can find. <clears throat> I don't want to show a video have children. Uh, let us do this then. I will go and Google. Habib is somebody claimed to be grandsons of Muhammad too. Yeah, that's what they call themselves, Habib. You know? It's a big scam. This is why in certain countries those people will be arrested and they will be killed immediately. You know, like depend which country you are in, because they knew that they are a scam and they knew that they are uh, dangerous. Uh, no luck. I don't know what happened to the video. Right. I know what happened to it. Let us see, Prophet Muhammad ancestor. I would try. I would. I would try a different word in the search engine. Still, the video is not coming. yeah maybe you can find yourself you will see that all of them in the videos they are extremely white blonde red-headed people you know i am you know i challenge you this guy he challenged me hello hello Hello? Are you going to talk? Hello? Hello, the guy who challenged me, are you there? Oh boy.
Can you download Skype for me? How I can download Skype? How you are using Skype? You are using the... Uh... Yeah. Download Skype for me? I never heard of such a thing. You are using Skype already. Eh? Uh, sorry, uh, using what? Uh, he's saying he, he wants to use a Skype to talk to me. Okay. You are paid by Israel Embassy. I wish. Please talk to them. Hey, Abdul, can you talk to them? Tell them the payment did not receive yet. I don't mind. My car is so old. Very old. To the point if I leave the door open, nobody will steal it. You are paid by the Israeli embassy. Good. I'm waiting. Where is the payment? Can you call them? <laughs> Brother Antetar, this guy is paid by the Israeli embassy. Your prophet was paid by the Israeli embassy. He is the one who says the one who built the, 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 the Beitul Maqdis is Solomon. And Solomon is the king of the Jews. No, I cannot hear you. Hello? Hello? Fix your mic, fix your mic. I hear nothing. You know, obviously your prophet Muhammad is a Zionist. You know, we have the proof. It is him who said that the one who built Al-Aqsa, is not Al-Aqsa, is the temple of uh, Solomon. He said that, not me. Why are you upset from me? I just show what Muhammad said. Muslims get angry. You're a prophet, obviously. He's a Zionist. Big Zionist. He is in the party of Netanyahu. Prove me wrong. <clears throat> Look at the family of a Prophet Muhammad. I found only this video. Look at this video, man. I mean, look at this. Some living de descendant of Prophet Muhammad. Look at this. They are, at least here they are adding people. They have normal faces. The video before it, it was only blonde people. There's nobody have black hair whatsoever. Everybody is blonde. Well, they can do the same here. They can record and cut here too. Who cares? Why not? I don't mind, you know, cut and play. Who cares? Um, update yourself. Yeah, the family of Prophet Muhammad. Well, we have it in YouTube anyway. They can download the video from YouTube and they can post it in their channel. I challenge them actually to do so. I, I beg them to do that. You know, obviously, the Muslims, they cannot handle the truth. And right away when they see what we prove, they call you a Zionist. Your, your God is Zionist. It's Allah who promised the Jews their land. So your Quran, Quran says that. It's your prophet who says the one who built the Aqsa is not the Muhammadan, it was the Jews. A king, his name is Solomon, he is the son of David, and he is a Jew. Hmm? And when Muhammad, he said he went there, the Arab, they start laughing at him.
Do you see it? So obviously your prophet was is paid by the Jews. Why he's saying the one who built it is Solomon, and Solomon is the king of the Jews. Solomon, the son of David. So there's no confusion about him. It's not like maybe maybe it's the same Solomon, different Solomon. It is Solomon, and he is a son of David. There's no doubt. So any Muslim would like to call? If you are using a phone and your phone is not working in Paltalk, maybe you have an old version of it, you know, use someone else's phone if you're family. Don't call me from your phone. <coughs> Hello? Hello? Uh, it's not working. You need to go to the setting and you change your microphone, the default. Maybe it's hooked to something else. Maybe you need to take off your uh, headset. Any Muslim? So you can say whatever you want about this is not the land of the Jews, but obviously if you say that, that's mean your prophet is a liar. And if you say Allah, he gave it to them because at that time they were Muslims, that is even more stupid. Because you just confirm that because they are not from my religion, I will take it. <laughs> and you just confirm by saying that, that Allah is a stupid because don't Allah, he knew that they are not going to be Muslims in the future? Don't Allah knew that those are not going to stay as Muslims? Call me Mr. Jew. Okay, I will call you. It's not working. See, this is what happened to you. By the way, Paltok is owned by the Jews. Google is owned by the Jews. YouTube is owned by the Jews. And you are, all of you are a bunch of potatoes. What you can do about it? All of you, you live by the blessing of the Jews. Name for me one big company in the world is not owned by the Jews. And you are not inside it and all your pictures and your family inside it. Just name one. They hate the Jews, but they are living under their shoes. All those websites, everything is owned by the Jews. Even your credit card is owned by the Jews. Even your bank card is owned by the Jews. Because all, all banks who they are in the Middle East, they have no credit except the credit of the big companies like Visa and MasterCard, etc. And those are owned by the Jews. Face it. So you buy an airplane ticket, you pay the Jews. You go to the restaurant, you pay, you pay the Jews. You are number one supporter for the Jews. You use YouTube, you are making money for the Jews. Everything you do is you are working for the Jews. And the funny, the Jews, they don't let me collect donation from people. Look, they don't. They took away this option from my YouTube from a long time ago. Almost more than a year. Why? Because I'm not a nice person. I, you know, I expose Islam. So why the Jews are upset from me? Hmm? <clears throat> okay, I will try one more time. All right.
You hear me? You hear me? Now you see, I hear a sound, but he's not talking. I don't know. Take, take care, my friend. I'm not going to keep calling you. This guy is not currently online. All right. Actually, the truth is, the Jews always side with Muslims. This is the truth. You see, when I am, when I speak about Israel, I'm not defending the Jews. I am defending the truth. This is the land of the Jews. But in reality, nobody side with Muslims as much the Jews they do. If you go and you know, if you go in the ground and you see which one the Jews they fight, they side with a Christian or a Muslim, you will find they side with Muslims. Because the Jews always they find Islam is not a threat in the way of conversion. Jews don't convert to Islam. Islam is so stupid for a Jew to convert. Rarely you will find a Jew converting to Islam. But you will find tens of thousands and millions of Jews who became Christians. This is why the Jewish rabbi, they are so angry from a Christianity, not from Islam. Islam is not a threat for them. That is uh, the truth. All right. You know, uh, if you go, there's a guy, his name is Toriva Singer, right? You know him? I made videos about him. He's a rabbi. This guy, he will never speak negative about Muhammad. Never. He called Muslims cousins. But 24 hours, 7 days a week, he's making fun of Christianity. All Muslims, they subscribe to his channel. Go check it out. This is the truth. So we are not defending the Jews. We are sharing the truth. This is the land of the Jews. You like it, you don't like it, who care? I don't side with the, I don't sign with, like side with the group. I side with the truth. If this land is the land of the Arab, I would say it's the land of the Arab. If it is the land of the Chinese, I would say it's the land of Chinese. Very simple. If you ask me, Iraq belong to who? I would say the Assyrian and Chaldean. That's it. I want to say the Jews. Any Mohammedan? And you know, uh, if I go to Israel, I told you I like to go to Israel, but I think they will not let me get in. So we are discriminated either way. You know, I mean, I don't blame them because I'm an Arab. They will say, okay, maybe he's a terrorist. Maybe he's doing something wrong. You never know. So in one hand, you are an Arab. and the other hand, you are a Christian. So the Arab discriminate you because you are a Christian. The Jews will discriminate you, and I don't blame them, because you're an Arab. You know what I mean? <clears throat> but it doesn't matter, you know, we will never hate the Jews, and we will support the existence of Israel for a very simple reason. This is their land. He tried different setting. Let us see. <clears throat> okay. Hello. Oh, my friend, I have to block you now because this has became boring and useless. Sorry. I just block your name.
Call me fool. Uh, okay, let's see who's a fool. Uh, Stalling software. We could not call you, Hussein. The fool is the one who believes that there's a god he make his penis endless, not me. We talk about fool. The fool is the one who believed that there's a guy he made fun of the miswak and he put it in his anus and then Allah made him deliver a baby after nine months. And that baby was a rat. The seal is the fool. The Muslim talking about the fool. A person who believes in a God and this God he sat in the top of a rooster. And he is amazing God but he sat in the top of the rooster. Yeah. True story. Right? Do we have any Muslim left before we leave? Anyone? All the stupid things in their cult and yet they call you a fool. You are the fool, not them. How Allah look like? We don't know. Don't imagine. Why Allah have hands? Don't ask. Why Allah have foot? Don't question. Or how Allah is in the chair? Don't even imagine. So what kind of religion this religion is? Where, where is even your, you don't even have a religion. You people have a co collection of cartoon. Mickey Mouse is better. A guy, his name is Jibreel, he come to Muhammad, he squeeze him three times. And no mayonnaise come out. Okay, why he squeeze him three times? I want an answer. And each time he said to him, read, and Muhammad said to him, I cannot read. So why he squeeze him again? And after he squeezed him three times, and he kept saying to him, I cannot read. What happened? What is next? And why the guy did not say to him, Assalamu alaikum? And why the guy did not say to him, okay, I am a messenger of Allah. At least say something. Have you ever heard of two people meet, and then the first thing they do, they start squeezing each other? Is that like a tradition in Islam? That angel of, of Allah, he squeezes anyone who want to talk to him because Allah he sent him to? What you thought about nation of Islam? Nation of Islam is not Muslim. Those are just a racist cult. Like It's like Islam, but it's a racist cult. You know, it's a, it's a black thing. They believe that the, the white man is the devil. Muhammad was very white. So it's just an organization sponsored by Al Qazafi. Al Qazafi was hoping that one day he will use them for his agenda. So he flooded them with millions and millions of dollars. And they used that millions, those millions, to convert a lot of black people. But now the money is drying. Qazafi is dead. The Golden River stopped. Eh, and now it's going to shrink. No money, no honey. They, uh, they make big conference and they pay for the hotel if you come and join us. And people, you know, there's many uh, poor people, they would love to go to Las Vegas. We will invite you to Washington DC. We rent the, the whole resort. Free hotel, free food, free buffet, free shrimp. Who can refuse that, especially those poor people who cannot afford to, to, to buy a flight. This is how they make people convert to the cult. But this is the, was in the time of Al Qazafi. And this is why when they kill Al Qazafi, those people they cry for him. Uh, Islam will prevail. Well, thank you very much for saying such a thing because you just admitted that pre Islam never prevailed then until now. If Islam in the golden age could not prevail, how Islam is going to prevail in the in, in the in the future? You tell me. And as long as you are saying Islam will prevail, that's mean your prophet is a scam. Because your prophet is the one who says Islam start as a small and will end as a small. So are you saying that your prophet is a fraud? Exactly. Your prophet is a fraud. Thank you very much. Muslims, when they say things, they help us to expose the cult of Muhammad. Muhammad, he witnessed that this religion will end so small. 
no, no, no believers left almost. So if you say to me, this religion will be so big, that's mean Muhammad is a liar and he's a fraud. And as you see, this is Sahih. You see it? So did your prophet give false prophecies or he's a, he's a, he's a telling true prophecy? I want your answer, please. Do you already named or trained your successor? My friend, what is successor? I don't know. Somebody told you I'm a prophet or something? You, all of you, train yourself, study, and you will do. I hope you will do better than me. What successor? I, I did my part. I did my share. And whoever would like to learn, whoever brave, whoever can take responsibility and even stress because they will threat you, they want to kill you, and they want to go after you. You know, you know that, that story. So it's not for everybody. Whoever can do that, yeah. Happy for you. Uh, so do you see here, Muhammad, he says clearly that Islam is taught as a small cult and will end as a small cult. So when the Muslims, they say Islam will dominate, are you saying Muhammad is a fraud? Did Muhammad lie here? Look at Khalid now, he is so quiet. Hey Khalid, are you there? Hey Khalid, you are the one who said Islam will prevail. Are you saying Muhammad did lie? I'm waiting for your answer. Right now he will bite his tail, he will wrap it between his legs, and he will stop texting. And this is why they don't dare to debate me, because whatever they say, I'm going to get them busted. Anything you say, just say it. Whatever you say to me is going to be used against you. Islam is haq, that's wonderful. Guys, Islam is haq. Hmm. Well, are you trying to steal the name of Jesus? Jesus says, I am the truth. And your God, Allah, Aka Muhammad, he stole the name from Jesus. Who is was exists first according to you Muslims? Jesus or Muhammad? He will say Jesus. In the Bible, Jesus said, I am the truth. Then your prophet says, Allah is the truth. So you stole the name of Jesus, that he is the truth, and you attach it by glue to a false God, his name is Allah. Aftermarket religion. You feel pity for me? No, I feel pity for you. Because even if you die for the sake of Allah, Allah will make you a chicken. Do you want to show you the hadith? Have you ever heard of a religion that this God, if you die for him, he will make you a green bird? What you would do with that? So now he promised you a lot of women for sex, and now you are a bird without a penis? Huh? And the funny actually, not only you will be in a, uh, uh, you will not be a bird, you will be inside the bird. What a stupid religion. So all those who fought for the sake of Allah, doing jihad, ISIS, Al-Qaeda, at the end, Allah will put them inside the bird? What they are doing there? Who is a Muslim want to help us? You are now inside the bird. Okay, wonderful, I like that. What you will do there inside the bird? You are not even the bird, you are inside the bird. No, there is a different hadith says you will be a bird, but the one I have, or the one I can show you now, it says you will be inside the bird. What a stupid cult. Let's see if I can find it here. Hmm. Read with me carefully. This is a religion? 
This is a religion. Read, read, read and love. This is Sahih Muslim, Sahih Hadith. Okay, it's going to be the souls. Read carefully. The souls of the murderers live in the bodies of a green bird. And by the way, this is false translation. It says in Arabic, the souls of the murderers, all of it will live inside the green bird, not the green birds. So all of you, let us say you are a million person who die for the sake of Allah. Allah will put you all of you inside the chicken. Why is that? What kind of religion? Is, what kind of a promise this promise is? Do you see it? They say to you because it says Tyron Khudurin that make it many birds. But that will not make any sense. Because you can say the one who died for the sake of Allah, Allah will make him a bird. Okay, let us say it's a one bird. What what is that now? So you die you are Osama Billah, then you fought for Allah and now Allah will push you in the anus of a bird? What you will do there? What is a special? Are you there? What is special about you now inside the green bird? Are you a parrot? Are you a parrot? Read. That their souls are in a green bird, wandering in paradise, wherever they wish. Like what? So this is what happened now after all this time fighting for Allah, dreaming about the virgin. So now I have a, and they are so blonde, so white, and they have big ass, big boobs, and now you are a chicken. So what you would do with those women? I think your God, he is planning to use your peak for sex. You enter, you enter to your virgin in the heaven, and you, she will say to you, take a peek. Take a peek, literally. And then you drag your peek and use it for sexual intercourse. And the funny, you know, you show them the stupidity, they say to you, you are a liar. It's in the front of you. It's not even my translation. Take a peek. All right. <clears throat> Let us see. This guy he is texting. He supposed to now he is using his uh, peak. Let us see. Let us call him. Even though I should go by now, actually. But anyway, I, I want to have a fun, actually. Hmm. <clears throat> Hello. Hello? Are you going to talk? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Go ahead. What do you want to say to us? You said you want to bust me. Yeah, I want you to prove to me that that Israel belongs to the Jews. Oh, you want me to prove to you that Israel is the land of the Jews? Yeah. Okay. Are you a Muslim? Yes, I am. How, what is the proof that you are a Muslim? Can you say the Shahada? Hello? 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 Are you there? Okay, let me call him again. <coughs> it says currently is not online. <coughs> I 
You lost connection, my friend. It says you are not online no more. Let's try again. It says he is not online. Text me when you come back online. We are not lucky. Each time, you know, we get somebody in. And he sounds like he's so excited. If you hear me, log off. Maybe you have something wrong with your internet. Log off and come back on Paltok. Let me text him. <clears throat> no, it says he is not online. So, uh, no. It says he is not online, he's offline. Maybe he have a bad connection. Are you there, Othman? Text me if you hear me. It says he's offline. See how lucky we are? You know, when we find somebody he can tow, eh, we lost him. Unbelievable. Really He's still not there. Let me restart from my side. Maybe it's from my side. You never know. I will open my pearl talk again. <clears throat> okay, we are online again. All right. Hello? Are you there, Othman? Hello? Yeah, mute YouTube. Please mute YouTube. You can keep it running, but mute it. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, sorry about that. I lost no, my internet no, connection. No problem. So I was saying you are a Muslim, right? Yeah. But you are a real Muslim, not fake. Sorry, what, what was that? Can you say Shahada to prove that you are a Muslim? Yeah, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. What does that mean? That there is no God but Allah and that Prophet Muhammad is his messenger. So why you are putting the name of Allah with the name of Muhammad? Are you a mushrik? No, no, it's not uh, It's not to do with mushrik. Uh, it's just to say that the Prophet Muhammad is the, is the messenger. Yeah, but you are associating the name of God with the name of a man. Is Muhammad a man or a God? No, no, he's one of the best men of all time. Doesn't matter. Why you don't say the name of Jesus with him? Why you don't say the name of Abraham? Why you don't say the name of Adam? Why you chose only the name of Muhammad out of 124,000 messenger? Because you are a mushrik. Anyway, this is yes. a topic. We will go there for uh, you. You asked me about Jerusalem, right? About the land of the Jews. Yeah. Do you, do you, yeah, because listen. Yeah. Go ahead. Because in the Bible, it even says that the Jews were expelled by by God. Even mm. the actual Jews today, mm. they believe that that land does not belong to them. 
Exactly. It's only the Zionist Jew. No problem. But you but you forgot that God he expelled them as a punishment and God he brought them back. Isn't it God who brought them back with Moses? So here we go, they are expelled. Show me proof. The Quran in front of you, here we go. Chapter 5, verse number 21. After they've been expelled, the, ex the expel happened first. You know, they've been taken as a slaves. And then now God, he brought them back to their land. Chapter 5, verse number 21, the verse in the front of you. Give me one second. Let me open up YouTube. No problem. <clears throat> you do not need to open YouTube. Open your, well, to, I mean, your uh, Quran if you want. Chapter 5, verse number 21. No, that's fine, man. All right. That's fine. I'm, I'm live on YouTube now. Let's see. All right. Let's read it together. Read it. Go ahead. Don't misinterpret the, the verse, please. I will not. It's you, the Muslim. You are the scholar. I'm learning from you. Go ahead. Tell me what it says. It says, All oh, my people, into the Holy Land, mm. which Allah has assigned to you, and mm. turn not back in flight, for then you will be re returned as losers. Okay. Who is talking now? That's God uh, uh, speaking to Moses. Okay. But you have to read the Tafsir Jalalain. Okay. Read you the... can't just. Uh, no, no problem. But you can't is, just. No problem. Is that Jalalain is your God or Allah? He's not our God. Okay. Okay. So you ver... need to understand no, that no, he's, no, he no, was no, one no, of the we, best scholars. Okay. We will go to Jalalain. But there's a verse here that says that Allah he assigned the land to the people of Moses. Does it say that or not? Yes, he did, but later he takes it away from them okay. and gives it to the Palestinian people. Okay, where, where it says Allah, he took it away from them and he gave it to the Palestinian. If you show me that, I will shave my 20-foot beard. Go ahead. Because when Umar, when he, uh, no, no, uh, Umar, my uh, when you he took it, No, you said Allah, he took it away from them. Can you show me the verse where it says Allah, he took it away from them and he gave it to Palestinian? You mentioned the word Palestinian, I heard you. Okay, this is Tafsir al Jalalain in front yeah. of you. Tafsir al Jalalain, it says here, All my people enter the Wait, Holy Land. Second. Show me. Okay. I can't see anything on the screen. We'll maybe okay, take... let's read it. Let's okay. read it together. Okay, read it. You read it from your English is better than mine. Uh, all my people uh, enter the Holy, enter the Holy, the purified land which God. Which God hmm. has ordained for you, which I command you to enter, and this is serial Shem. Do not turn back in flights. Hmm. Reject in fear of the enemy or you. Hmm. Yeah, it is look, listen, it is true that God gave them this land, hmm. but later but later he expels them. That's why the Jews when, today when, when, when this happened? Where? When did he expel them? Show me the the verse where it says expel them from the land you are talking about, which is Jerusalem. Okay. Okay, why? Okay, why weren't Jews? Why weren't Jews living in that land for hundreds of years? Now they are just occupied it now. So, okay, so you're, you're, they knew. They, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. So you are saying to me now the Roman are Muslims? What's that? The Roman are Muslims, and because they are the one who made the Jews run away, the Roman. No, no. So, Listen. so you, it's not your God then. This is so. So it's not God who expelled them. This is a lie. It is the Roman because the Jews they side with the Persian during the war with the with the Roman. So the Roman they kicked them out, and the, the Jews whoever left for their safety they ran away because they joined the uh, the enemy of the Roman. And even the Quran speak about it. A chapter, the chapter of a room. You're a prophet. Remember, you are a Muslim, right? Yeah. Okay. You're a prophet. He says when the Roman they are going to be victorious, the Muslims will be happy. Correct? Yeah. What? Yeah. All right. What do the scholars say? What do the uh, scholars my, say my about friend, this? My, my friend, you are the one who said to me, a Jalalain, I showed you a Jalalain. He's your scholar, your choice. So when the Roman were defeated, oh, when, when the Roman were defeated, Muhammad, he claimed that Allah told him that the Roman will be victorious and the believers will be rejoicing. Why they will be rejoicing? Is the Roman Muslims? No. So why the why the believers they will be rejoicing? Here it says, when the Roman will defeat the enemy, the Persian, the believers will have a rejoice. Why? Why you will have a party when the Roman win the war?
I don't know how to. I don't know how to explain this one. Well, you can't explain it because Muhammad is a flip flap. Muhammad in the morning he is a Jew. Afternoon he is a Christian. In the in the in in the, in the, in the night club he is a, an Arab a pagan. So Muhammad here suddenly he is siding with the Christians against the Persian, and he is saying when the Roman they win we will have a party because they are believers. But is it your prophet? He says that the Roman are mushrikeen and they are kafar. So how the, the Muslim yeah, will rejoice? They're kafir. Okay, so how they are kafir and the Muslim will rejoice if the kafir win? <laughs> now let us go back. So the Jews were not cooked by Allah from their land. That is a lie. The land was given to all, to the Jews by Allah, and you are the one who did read for me. And even in the interpretation you choose, it says, "Don't turn your back from it, never. Otherwise, you will end as a loser." Correct? Does it say that? Don't. Okay, but wasn't it that Umar my, uh, my friend. wasn't Umar wasn't he the one that took over Jerusalem? Okay, Umar he took over Jerusalem, but at that time there was no Jews anyway. It was only the Christians there. Yes, but he took all of, but he he captured that land. He took over that area. No problem. And then we kicked him out. And what does have to do with the Jews? Show me proof. No, no one kicked him out. Okay, who was, hold on. No, what do you mean nobody kicked him out? We kicked the Muslims out. Right now, who is the one controlling the controlling Jerusalem? If you because if you look at history, but yeah, my friend, if you look at history, the, one, the Muslim my, my friend, they the never one, lost a today, they today. never lost a single war. No, you lost all the war. Even your prophet, he lost many. I can show you tons of them. And your prophet, he lost his teeth with it too. Even though he don't he don't go to fight, he hide in the behind. But your prophet always he lose. You never heard of Ahad? You never heard of of, of, of Badr al-Sura and Badr al-Kubra? What are you talking about? But let's not to change topic now. The most, so listen, listen, listen. The listen. Muslim. Okay, listen. When Allah He promised the Jews to give them the land, why He promised them to give them the land? He He, he gave them the land, but then the Jews they disbelieved. They became kafirs. Okay, hold on. So you are saying that this land belonged to the Jews, and if you change your religion, we have the right to take it away from you. Correct? Yes. Okay, so now you Muslims, if you, you know, because you used to be uh, the the people in Mecca, they used to be pagan, right? And then they became Muslims. So now because they, they became Muslims, uh, uh, you change the religion. That's mean the pagan, the one who owned the land, because the one who changes religion is the one should lose the land. So the land should go back to the Arab pagan, not to the Muslim. We should kick the, the Muslims out of the, of the land. And according to your version too, the one who built the Kaaba, it was Abraham, correct? Yeah, uh, okay. Abraham and his sons, they built the Kaaba. Okay, no problem. Uh, Abraham and his son, they built the Kaaba, that's wonderful. So now, Abraham and his son, they built the Kaaba. Then the Arab took over the Kaaba, correct? Then the Arab, um, they changed their religion, yeah. they became Muslim, so we should kick them out, because you are the one who said, the one who changed the religion, we should kick him out. He lose the land. Um, Indonesian, they used to be uh, Hindus, Buddhas, they changed the religion, many of them, they became Muslims, so we should kick them out, according to you. Anyone he changes religion, we should kick him out. So your God, Allah, is a funny God, so he gave them the land, he did not know that the Jews later will change the religion, according to you? He don't, do he know or he don't know? No, you're, you're right. Hmm. So he knew, right? He knew that they are going to change religion or not? No, yeah, God knows everything. Okay, so as long as he knew, why he gave it but, to them anyway? And he said to them, don't retreat, don't leave it. And not only that, he says to them, go and kill the Palestinians. Don't Allah knew that those Palestinians later, they will become Muslims? So it is your Allah who ordered the Jews to kill the Palestinian. And not only that, the Jews, they refuse to go and kill the Palestinian. Allah, he insists, and because they refuse, Allah, he made them lose their way in the desert for 40 years. Is that correct? Yeah, that's true, man. Okay. That's true. So Allah, he get angry from the Jews for not killing the Palestinians. So why you are angry for the Palestinian today when it was Allah who was so upset for not killing every single Palestinian? 
And not only he's angry, he made them lose their direction so they will not go there for 40 years as a penalty. So according to your book, the Jews are bad if they don't kill Palestinians. The Jews are good if they kill Palestinians. And the Quran in front of you. Uh, can you just show me what, what chapter that is so I can look the, it up on my screen? The same chapter, chapter 5, and I'm reading it right now for you, verse number 26. We showed it 21, 22, 23, chapter. 24. So chapter 5, 26. It yeah. says it clearly, because they refuse to go and fight with Musa to kill the Palestinians, the Allah decided to make them lose their way and they will not enter it until 40 years. Uh, the, therefore, this holy land is forbidden to them for 40 years. Mm. In distractions, they will wander through mm. the land. So be not sorrowful over the people who are rebellious and disobedient to Allah. Mm. So you are seeing, so, you, so now what we are seeing, that the Jews, if they want to be good people, they should kill the Palestinians according to the Quran. So your God is the one encouraging violence and to slaughter the, the, the Palestinian. Otherwise, Allah is upset from them. This is the person in front of you. And not only is upset, he punished them severe punishment. He made them lose their way in the desert. Imagine 40 years in the desert. They cannot find direction. All of this because they refuse to kill the Palestinians. So your God is the, is the killer of the Palestinians. It's not the Jews. The Jews refuse. The Jews, they said, we will not do it. We are not going to kill the Palestinian. Allah, he's got so angry and so upset. He says, because you refuse to kill the Palestinian, I'm going to punish you and make you lose your direction for 40 years. Why, your God, he hid the Palestinians? Does it say why he hated the Palestinians? You tell me, you are the Muslim. Remember, Maybe they rebelled against him. Friend, before you call me, you said you are going to get me busted. So I'm waiting for your bust. Uh, don't tell me, does it say? You, uh, are you asking me? I want to learn from you. So here we go. Go and bust me. Allah, he is so upset. He want them to kill the Palestinian. The Jews refuse. So according to your book, the, 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 Jews are very, yeah. the Jews are very nice people. They were very merciful. They don't want to kill the Palestinian. Your God is the one who loves to slaughter every single Palestinian. Yes, that's yeah. That's because at that time there were no Muslims. There's a, uh, okay. God is talking so, about uh, so you Prophet are saying, So you are saying that you Muslims uh, are a bunch of racists. If somebody don't believe in our religion, we have to kill him. And you are speaking about the human rights. So based on you now, you have to kill everyone is an American. Everyone is a Japanese. Everyone is a Chinese. Everyone is a German. If he is not a Muslim, so what kind of religion this religion is? Just because they are not Muslim, we can kill them. This is what you just said to me. No, no, I'm not. No, I'm not saying that. That's what God is saying. No, no, no. You That's believe, what God is saying. I'm not saying that. But you believe in that God, don't you? Don't you believe in what he said? And you are the one who gave me the answer. It's not your God. It's you who said, because at that time they were not Muslim, so it's okay to kill them. So it's okay to kill me. It's okay to kill us and your neighbor. It's okay to kill everybody who is not a Muslim. And you go and you four people say, support us against the aggression of the Jews. When in fact, you Muslim believe in killing every single person who is not a Muslim. What kind of evil religion this religion is? Uh, can I speak, uh, Mr. Christian Prince? Okay, my friend, I'm, I'm asking. Can I say something? Yes, for sure you can, and that's why we are talking. Yeah, I, yeah. All right, sure, I understand what you're saying. I, I, I get what you mean, okay? Okay. You want to know the reason why that uh, Allah uh, has uh, ordered uh, Prophet Moses and his people to kill these people. Is that correct? You told me but already. you need to look at the context. You gotta know why he. My friend, you gotta know why he ordered them you told to me. conquer the land and to kill the people, you told just me, you like told in me. the Old Testament. No, 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 no you told like me when already. God says to kill the. My friend, you told me already. You told me because they are not Muslim. You forgot a second yeah, ago. You told me because they are not Muslims. So you gave me the answer. Why are you repeating yourself? Because they are yeah. Muslims, so we got it. So now because yeah, okay, they are yeah, Muslims, yeah. so are you saying now, okay, is the Shia, is the Shia in Iran Muslims? No. So should you kill them? No, no, we shouldn't kill people. God says in the Quran what are you that if you about kill one person, ago? it's like killing all of mankind. No, Allah did not say that in the Quran. This is what supposedly was given to Moses. This is the law of the Jews. 
the Jews, if they, the, the God of the Jews said, if you kill one person as if you killed all mankind, so your prophet is copying from the Old Testament and it was given to Moses, not to you. And you are the one who just said to me, the Palestinian, they were not Muslims, so this is why he ordered to kill them. So you are saying to me that because what is guilty in Allah's eyes is you not being a Muslim and you deserve to be killed, correct? No, uh, so what no, is that's the, not it. What is the, the reason you, you say uh, you say, listen, you listen, listen you why, got, why you are changing your words? Isn't you who say it because they are not Muslims? Yeah, I did say that. Okay. I did say that. So but the, I'm, I'm ignorant. I don't know all things. But are you ignorant? But are you ignorant when you say to me because but the there Muslims, is my friend? Are you ignorant? Are you saying you you are saying wrong to me when you said because they are Muslims? No. Right. So you what assist? I'm saying okay, is, that's wonderful. Uh, what so, you call it? You gotta look at the context. My friend, you are the one who gave me the answer. Stop telling me. Get, get the contact. It's you who get the contact. It's you who gave me the answer. You insist. It's true. You said because they are Muslims. So based on what you are saying, anyone is not a Muslim. We have the right to take him away, take his land away. So Allah, well, He ordered the Jews to kill them because at that time they were not Muslims. So if a land today is not a land of Muslims like Thailand, well, we have to go and kill them. Let me ask you, did your prophet say is go and attack the Romans so we can get the blonde girls? The prophet, he's not a womanizer. Please don't uh, misguide people. Okay, my friend. The prophet is not a, a womanizer. I, I did not say anything. I said, did he say that or not? Did I say he was, did I say womanizer? Did I say that word? I did not say anything. I said, did he say that or not? Yes. Okay. No, because you're saying the prophet, he wanted to attack the Romans for the blondies. The, okay, the but, prophet, he doesn't he, care did, about women and girls say, and things like he, that. Okay, my friend, did he say attack the Roman and get the blondie? Yes or not? Of course not. This is this is a lie. This okay, is, here we this go. Is, this is okay, fabrication. No here we go. It's in the front of you. This is Tafsir al-Tabari, hadith number 16786. Qala Rasulullah. صلى الله عليه وسلم اغزوا تغنموا بنات الأصفر يعني نساء الروم and I'm willing to give you the link in your skype and I your, can't see platform. on my screen no problem do you, do you speak Arabic? pardon? do you speak Arabic? No, no, I, I can't speak Arabic. Okay, no problem. We can use Google Translation. Here we go in the front of everybody. I'm going to click at Google Translation. No, no, you you can read. I did. It's, no, no, you can read. I'll take the, your word the for messenger, it. The messenger of Allah says, attack the woman so you can get the daughters of the yellow. He meant the, the women of the woman. And I'm going to copy the link. I will post it in the chat so everybody can do the same. And I will do use Google Translation. And this is your Islamic website. Here we go. Can you? Here we go. This is Islam. Web. Can that you meant, send it to me on Palco, please? Sure, sure. Can you send it on. to me on Palco? Sure, go ahead. Let me let me give it to you in a second. Give me a second. Here we go. You can use Google Translation from your side. And remember, the second I said that to you, you said my prophet is not a womanizer, which means you agreed that if he said that, he is a womanizer. He is after women. He is not after God. So now we go back. Open, please, the website I just gave you. Click in it. Click at Google Translation from your side. Translate to English. All right. So what the prophet said? Attack the woman, so we can get the blonde. What diverse. is this? Sur sur the door of the my friend. Hadith number one six seven eight. Conquer the ro attack the woman, so you can get the yellow, yeah. the daughter of the yellow, meaning the ro the women of the woman. <laughs> what kind of a prophet this prophet is? Uh, the. the the English translation is, is is showing something else. It's not showing. No problem. Read for me. Hadith number one six seven eight seven. It says, "Conquer the daughter of the yellow, meaning the women of the woman." So he's saying the translation is is wrong. You agree? He's saying attack the woman so you can get the daughters of the yellow. The yellow is the blonde, meaning the women of the woman. Hadith number one six seven eight seven. What kind of a prophet you do say so, such a thing? Is this Sahih? You tell me. If is this Sahih, sahih or Daif? Everything is Daif for you. I mean, is, is, that, is that your book? Is that Tafsir? If it is wrong, why it's in the Tafsir?
conquered the daughters of the yellow, many the wombs of the robes. Then he mentioned. Hmm. So you're a prophet. Yeah, that's because yeah. the Romans, they were kafirs. So because they are kafirs, let us attack them, get their women, right? Get the blondie. So he's seducing his men to go attack the neighbors who they are Roman. They are not Muslim, so we can steal their daughters. What a great religion. So now if the Jews attack Hamas, no, and that Allah doesn't doesn't... let me show you how stupid the logic of Islam. Don't be upset from me. I'm using the word stupid because this is stupid. According to what you just said now, the Israeli army, they can attack Hamas and they can take all the women and rape them, especially the blonde ones, because they are not Jews. No, that's because the Romans, they waged war against him first. Because uh, they were the Roman, trying to the, spread the Roman, uh, the Roman never waged war against Muhammad. Secondly, even if that ever happened, what kind of a prophet says, attack them so we can get their daughter, the blondie? He did not say attack them so they can convert to Islam. He says attack them so you get the blondie. <laughs> I got to speak to my sheikh about this. Okay. Well, I, I will save the... I, I have an offer for you. Why you don't call your sheikh right now and let him join us in the conversation? Uh, because he's asleep. He's asleep? Okay, what about tomorrow? He's, sleep he's sleeping. I come always online. He can call me. You can call me and let him join with us. What do you think? Is he a big shake? Is he like a strong shake? Well, he, he's he, he well, he's a sheikh. He he's uh, he's been studying Islam for like ten years. Okay, like so, 10, 15 years. But do you think he have a good knowledge, or he is just a kid? No, no, he's 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 a very knowledgeable guy. All right, so that's why I'm so, going to say what you said, okay. and, and I'm going to show it to him. Okay, so what? What? The, so, do you promise me to let him call me? Can I have a promise from you? Well, uh, uh, well, I gotta speak to him if he wants to talk to you. Uh, right. If he wants so, to talk. Okay, no problem. You you find your way with the, with your guy now. So now, and then what we learned that Allah He yeah. gave the land to the Jews, and this is the land of the Jews. That's it. It's Allah who brought them there. All right. Yeah, it's Allah. Okay, now let me ask you. You Muslim, you, yeah. want, you want the Aqsa Mosque, right? You want the Aqsa Mosque, correct? Uh, yes, we do. We okay, need it. who is the one who built the mosque? Uh, who built the mosque? Yeah, was it Solomon? Okay, so how this is your mosque if this is the one who built it is Solomon? <laughs> uh, because Solomon. Uh, he's a Muslim. Uh, All the prophets uh, are Muslims. Alexander the Great is a Muslim. A donkey is a Muslim in Islam. Birds are Muslims. Pigs are Muslims. Cockroaches are Muslims. I mean, what's wrong with you, Muslims? Doesn't matter. <laughs> you, you are claiming that he is a Muslim, but this is Suleiman. He is the son of David. This is the king of the Jews. You made him Muslim just to hijack the land? That's it. You made him a Muslim. There's, there's any proof? Anyone. If there's any proof he was a Muslim, like why? He used to kiss a stones. He used to kiss a black stone. Anyone who submits their will to God is a Muslim by default. So the man, he never submit his will to your God. He never did. Let me ask you. So the man was a Muslim. Is Muslims allowed to have a statues in their synagogue or their mosque? No, no. Uh, you can't. It's it has to right? be destroyed. So if Suleiman he have a, 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 yeah, yeah. A, if he have a statues in his in his a temple, is that will make him a Muslim or will make him a kafir? Sorry, can you repeat that again? If Suleiman he put a statues in his temple, whatever temple he built, you call it mosque, you call it temple, whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. If yeah. he put a statues, is that will make him a Muslim or will make him yeah. a pagan? If if Solomon, okay, if he builds statues of himself, the statues for in his temple statues, and stuff, he's a for, pagan. Okay, he's a pagan. That's wonderful. So how come the Quran says that Solomon? Okay, he's a mushrikeen. Okay, he's a mushrikeen. He's wonderful, a mushrikeen. guys. He's a mushrikeen. Wonderful. So he's not a Muslim, right? He's not a Muslim if he did that, correct? The one who built the statues in his synagogue. Yeah. Okay, but the Quran says that uh, Suleiman he built. Uh, one second, one second, one second, one second, Christian prince. It's not just uh, Muslims. It's also uh, Christians that say 
those who build uh, no problem that, even friend, Christians believe my, my they say friend, you shouldn't build idols. my friend we are trying to that, find now if Suleiman is a Muslim or not it's you who say to me he's a Muslim but the Quran says that Suleiman he built I'm saying he, okay hold on Suleiman he built large statues in his Aqsa mosque that's what the Quran says chapter 34 verse yeah. number chapter 34 verse number 13 read it show me don't fabricate things uh, i don't fabricate. I'm I mean, everything i said to you i'm showing you on the screen and yet you said to me fabricate shame on you show respect i'm talking to you nicely is this quran or, or is this, this is, quran. is this in the quran or bukhari no, no this is quran are you going to say right, to me that's right are you going to say to me this quran is weak obviously it's weak maybe what do you think no. No, no, the Quran is not weak. Okay. The Quran is the perfect word of Allah. P very perfect. A lot of perfection there. I, you know, you, you made me laugh when you say that. So, if we go to the verse right now, we will see that this God Allah, uh, He have a man. His name is Sulaiman. He built a synagogue. You see, it says synagogue, and he put in it statues. You see it? Uh, can I read, please? Go. They work for him as he desired, making arches, images. Read. This translation is messed up. Hold on. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. So did he build the statues? And you are the one who said to me, the main... if you have a statues, he is not a Muslim. Uh, that, that made for him what he willed, synagogues and stat statues, bezin hmm. like walls and bulls. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, but statues of what? Is it was it, who, who built it? He built it, or other people built it they for are, him? They are doing his command. The genie, the genie working for him. He is the boss. He is the king. He had the ring. The Lord, you watch the movie, the Arabutar. He had that ring. So he had the ring. He controlled them. And those genie, they built for him whatever he want. He ordered them to build the statues in the synagogue and even pictures. So Suleiman, he he wanted to build that. Who is that? Or was it other it's, people? My friend, him? it says Allah, he gave him the command of the genie to do this to him. Allah is the one who told him to do so. What is Suleiman? Allah, he gave him the wind, the flying carpet. So he go and he take it, he fly with it. And the distance yeah, of a long morning. Flying carpet, I mean, it's in front why, of you. Verse why did you one. mention flying carpet? It, 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 is there. Not it, in. it is there, the flying carpet. Verse number 12, read it. You're making mockery. You think like this My is friend, Ali Dean cartoon. You, this I'm, is not it, man. I, I, thank you. He just admitted this Ali Dean cartoon, guys. Be my witness. It's not me who said that. So in front of you, it says Allah. He gave him the command in the wind to fly with it. This is the flying carpet. Go and read the interpretation. It is you who said to me, "Don't give your interpretation. Read the interpretation." Do, do you want me to show you the interpretation? It says Allah. He gave him a mate, made of wood. He command the wind, and then the wind show me, carried. Show me. What interpretation you want? Show me Tafsir Ibn Kathir. Okay, Tafsir Ibn Kathir. Guys, remember, he is the one who chose it. No problem. Chapter 34, verse number 12. Ibn Kathir. You got it? We have very good customer service here. Right? Here we go. This is Ibn Kathir. And let us see what Ibn Kathir he says. Read with me. <clears throat> Uh, uh nothing on my screen yeah you will see it hold on give me a second i'm just reading where it is explained that to me uh you take uh you take you take things out of context uh cp my friend it's you who chose you gotta read the whole passage friend, it's, it is you who chose emnika theory so whatever emnika theory right. says whatever emnika theory says we will take it right okay here we go read with me Having mentioned the yes, blessing which is right. okay, have, have favored Dawood, Allah follow, follows by his uh, uh, mentioning what he have give, gave to David and son of Solomon. May peace be upon them both. He subjugated the wind to him so it could carry his carpet. Do you see it? Does it say his carpet or I'm making things up? Let me zoom in for you. Here we go. When I said the flying carpet, you said, don't make fun. You are exaggerating. You are lying. Well, this is the flying carpet. 
And you are the one who says you made Islam like Alibaba. Sinbad. Exactly, it is Sinbad. This is this is Ibn Kathir. You are the this one who asked. This is the first time you, I'm reading. You. My friend, you are the one who asked me to go to Ibn Kathir. It's not even my choice, correct? Isn't it you who said to me go to Ibn Kathir? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is Ibn Kathir. Let me give you the link. Yeah, Here we go. I will, give it, right. I, I will give you the link. Here we go. So this is Ibn Kathir. And by the way, Ibn Kathir in English is way nicer than Ibn Kathir in Arabic, because in, in Arabic is horrible. There's six hundred thousand chairs in the top of the flying carpet. Six hundred thousand chairs in one flying carpet. Uh, so what do you say? He gave. What's the Arabic? Can you? What's the Arabic word that's used for carpet? Uh, besot, or uh, meat. Uh, so you know, there's many besot. So, so what will we do now? Oh, this is first time I'm reading. So what do you think? You should leave Islam right now because you are the one who said, not me. Uh, you made it like uh, Alibaba. So you admit now that this is Alibaba. This is fiction. This is stupid. This is, you know, and you, and you are the one who says to me, don't make it, you know, come on. Don't say that. You make it like Alibaba. It's you who mentioned that. But this is Alibaba's story. I agree with you. No, I mentioned what you mentioned, it's you who said that, everybody heard you. This is, it's you who said to me, don't say that, this is not, there's no flying carpet, don't make it like Alibaba, funny Alibaba. Well, uh, I gotta reflect on this. I gotta reflect on this and... And what? So they will carry his carpet. I got. I gotta save this one. I gotta save this link, and I, I will show it to my sheikh. You can show it to whoever because you want, but uh, my, I don't think. But my friend, is that Ibn Kathir? Is that your Muslim website? Make, this it, it, make, can, uh, can Ibn Kathir fix it? I mean, can your sheikh fix it? Who is your sheikh? Here we go. You are the one who chose Ibn Kathir. This is the master of your masters, saying it's a flying carpet. Nah, you're right. Okay, so Ibn Kathir. I mean, there is one of the best actually. Islam. It says, according to Ibn Kathir, just to show you how the, the Muslim translation in uh, 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 in English, actually, even here it says that. Let me see. It says here, so the flying carpet one way for a month and go back again next month. Al Hassan al Basri said, he set out from Damascus in the morning and then uh, 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 he he go to, a, to a, like a, a, let us say, a, uh, like an area he called Astakhar, I don't know where is that located, and then he go all the way to Kabul, Kabul in Afghanistan. Yeah, that's. Can I read it, please? Uh, just one second, one second, please. He said that from Damascus in the morning. Then he ate a meal. And this is all with a flying carpet. Yeah, this is the flying carpet. This is Ibn Kathir. And this is the Quran. Oh, man. Oh, man. This is messed up, my friend. This is really messed up. It, this is like from Aladdin. Yeah, this is Al Aladdin. You are right. I mean, you know, I don't know. How old are you? Are you really going to believe in this madness? Be honest with me. It's you who said Alibaba. It's you who made fun of it because and you thought I'm lying to you. If I am you, I will leave this cult immediately. This is stupid. I'm not trying to insult you. I'm just telling you my, my, my opinion. Don't you agree with me? Be honest. Be honest with me. Don't you agree that this hey. is stupid? Be honest, Othman. All right. I'll be honest, okay? But what I'm reading right now, okay, it's, um, it's silly. It is silly. But... I, but I need to know more about it. I needed to know like the context, like what's about. Like, okay, let me, you know what I mean. Uh, Arthman, listen to me. Do you think Ibn Kathir he dared to say something is not what Islam teach? 
and the Muslims agree upon? No, he wouldn't do that. Okay, so that's it. There's no need to question no, anymore. He so he will not do that. He will not dare to do that. They will kill him immediately. So he is saying that and nobody oppose him. Nobody say you're lying. Nobody saying you're this is stupid. Nobody, this book is exist and every mosque, every, every sheikh says Ibn Kathir, Ibn Kathir is a big shot, right? So when he say that, the rest go quiet. Yeah. Okay, so now what we will do? How a smart person like you accept what you call silly? Uh, by the way, you just said that make a theory is silly too. Just what you said. No, no, I didn't. No, no, please don't. No, I did not. I didn't say Ibn Kathir is silly. No, you I said, said actually you said bigger than this. You said this is silly. He's talking about what? He's talking about Allah word. So Ibn Kathir said that according to you, you said this is silly. So Allah is silly. Ibn Kathir is silly, and whoever believe in this is silly. That's what you said. Okay, okay, I understand, but uh, could it not be like a miracle of God? It could, it could have okay. been a miracle. The, like... You know, Uthman, I, I don't want I don't, I don't like hypocrites. I don't think you are one with them. But don't you think it is silly to say a second ago it is silly, and now suddenly the city became a miracle? A second ago you say it, it is silly, and now you are saying it's a miracle. So how the miracle was a silly in the speed of light became a miracle? Well, I, I don't know how to explain this because uh, I, I I don't know how to explain it. This is just messed up. Uh, something surprising for me. Hmm. I never read it that way. I never knew it was a carpet or yeah, like so, what kind of carpet could it be? That I'm telling you, it's a very huge, uh, you know, uh, carpet. You know, a certain man he carried all his kingship equipment in the top of it, his army, his wives, his kingdom, everybody is not only Suleiman is flying in it, everybody. You said something about uh, 600,000 chairs uh, on the carpet, can you show me that? Yeah, I will try to find you the you reference, said... hold on. <clears throat> And um, please uh, send me that link as well to Paltag. I think you already have. I'll save it as well. Uh, uh, yeah. Give you what? <clears throat> and I, you already sent me the link because I'm going to show the link to my uh, to my sheikh uh, later in the afternoon. No problem. Yeah. Let us see here. Hold on. Let me see. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Let us see. I'm just trying to find where the, the uh, flying carpet. Um, are you in pain, my friend? Are you okay? I'm a little bit sick today as well. That's why. Your what? Uh, I don't know. I have a feeling that you are going to leave Islam very soon. Okay. Prove to me. Nah. Listen. Um. What? There is not a single contradiction in the Quran, you know? You can't... Do you get what I mean? Hmm. There is no single contradiction? Yeah. Who said that to you? Because uh, God, uh, he challenged the Muslims and the jinns, okay? Hmm. To, like, uh, to find them a single condition. A contradiction or to produce a chapter or a verse like this hmm. and no one could ever done and no one has ever done that till, till, till today oh, okay 
so if I show you how many contradiction you want to believe to because if you, you say it's single right so if we show you single that would be enough correct just one just one not not two not three not 100 just okay. a single one because okay. the Quran well, is the third <clears throat> word of Allah no problem so in the front of everybody if I show you that are you going to leave Islam or we are just you know just playing the game show me and I show you like I, are you making a challenge I'm not gonna play any games with you no, are you making a challenge? No, it's, it's not a challenge. No, my, my friend Othman, my, uh, Othman. It's I'm, not a challenge. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not a kid. I'm not a kid. And I believe you are not a kid too. You are a man, right? So I'm talking to you. Let us talk to each other in respect. So when you say to me, uh, uh, it's a challenge to... Uh, Allah, he made a challenge. Okay. So when you say that, it's mean this is super important. Yes. If we prove that this is false, that's mean Allah is false, correct? Yep, that's correct, man. Okay. So... If, and it's not, and that challenge wasn't just for the humankind, it but, was also for the genes. Exactly, and, yeah. Exactly. So if I prove it to you, then you will leave Islam. Listen, CP, if you could, if you could have proved that uh, many of, uh, no one can prove it. Do you, do you get what I mean? Otherwise, it would be proven like, yeah, no one can prove it. Hmm. This is still my question. It's never is been that, done still, before. Still, my question is valid. If I prove it to you right now as we speak, even though I'm here for many hours and really tired, and if I prove it to you, do you promise me you will leave Islam? Okay, prove, prove to me first. That, that you, you, but it, it can't be out of context and you can't um, twist the words. Do uh, you will, know what I mean? No, I will not. Okay. Uh, actually, I will make you help me to get the contradiction. And I will take your words, not my words. Is that fair? Because if you if you see the Quran, is, the Quran is filled with scientific miracles and literature, literacy miracle, everything, man. Do you get what I mean? Well, uh, what I know that it is the opposite. The Quran is filled with miracles. Yeah, but I know it is the opposite. Here we go. Read for me this verse, please. And as you said, you know, we don't want to take things out of context. So you give me the context. Chapter 2. Verse number 29. What do you understand from this verse? I can't read Arabic. It's not in Arabic, in English. Go ahead. Uh, I can't see anything yet. I, do I have to refresh? Wait, maybe a second. We'll show, you, we'll show it to you. Give me one second. It is... Is the, it, are you showing me the verse 29? Yeah. All right. It is he who hath created for you all things that are on earth. Moreover, his design compre uh, comprehended the heavens, for he gave order and perfections to the seven firemen and all things he had. Uh, mm. He had perfect knowledge. Mm. So what do okay, you understand? how is this a contradiction? Not, I, I did not say anything yet. I'm asking you, what do you think about, what, what do you understand from this translation which you saw on the screen? What What, what is this verse saying? What do you understand as a Muslim? Yeah, that uh, this uh, translation is a bit uh, silly, a, a, a bit weird. No problem. I actually I changed translation because translation created. was not correct. So here it says it is he who created for you all in earth and heaven, and then he yeah, he, he, wrote, he rose up to the heaven. No problem. And then he made them seven heaven. Okay. So what do you understand from this? Allah created the earth first, or created which one he finished first? Based on this verse, the earth or the heaven? It is he who created for you all that is on earth. Then it's the world rose over towards heaven and made them seven heavens. <clears throat> so it's saying here he created the earth. Mm. And then made seven heavens and he's the owner of everything. Mm. So which one Allah finished first? Did he finish the earth first or he finished he, he finished the heaven first? Hmm. 
uh, uh, can you show me a tafsir or a or commentary on this one? Which one you want? Which tafsir you want? Because there is not a single uh, imam that will say that that Allah created the earth first and then the heavens. Okay, but the verse says that in front of you, it is he who created for you what is all in the earth, and then he went to the heaven and he made them seven heaven. So it's clear, he finished everything in earth first, and then he went to the heaven. I mean, even this one need tafsir, but we can, um, go, we can go, no problem. Which, which tafsir you want? I'm, I'm saying uh, Jalalain or Ibn Kathir, okay, any of the two, go, big Jalalain. ones. That's right. Big one, no problem. I like the big ones. Here we go. And this is the. You don't like the big ones. You always. What? Well, you, you, you must have big ones. All of you are small for me. This is the truth. I never find one so it's always big. Here we go. It says, this is a Jalalain. It is he who created for you all that on earth. And that all that or so that may you benefit from them. Okay. And then what it says. Um, then after uh, the, uh, read, read me, uh, read me, read me. And then after he create, create, after he created the earth, creating the earth, he turned to that and he made his objects heaven and leveled them. So the earth is done first. If you don't like Ibn Kathir, we can go to different interpretation. No, no, no. I like Sorry, I mean, Jalalain. Jalalain. This, I mean, this is Jalalain. Let me read it. it yeah, we can go to Ibn Kathir too. This is Jalalain. That, yeah. Uh, can I read it first, please? This is Ibn Abba. Let me go to Jalalain. Hold on. Let me go to Jalalain back. Here we go. This is Jalalain. Read it. Uh, What do you what what say? What do you think? What is your conclusion, Antonio? It is he who created for you hmm. in the in the earth that is the earth. Hmm. and all that is in it so that you may benefit from and learn lessons from it. And then after creating the earth he turned to that is he made his objects heaven and level leveled hmm. from Okay. So, let us go. Yeah, it's saying here he created the earth first, right? Now let us to confirm. Let us go to Ibn and Kathir. Then... Let us go to Ibn Kathir because now here it says that. Okay, we agree. So now let's go to Ibn Kathir and see if Ibn Kathir confirmed that too. Okay, this is Ibn Kathir. And now everybody will see in a second that this is what it is. It is horrible. What we can do. <laughs> All right, so this is Ibn Kathir, and Ibn Kathir again, he will confirm that Allah, he created the earth first. Okay, this is Ibn Kathir, let's read together. Um, so, okay, here we go. He created the earth and Allah created the earth before the heaven, do you see it? Do you see it? Yeah. Okay. In, and when he uh, read it, please. and when he created the earth, smoke <sighs> smoke burst out of it. Allah said. So even the smoke which was in the sky, there's nothing. The smoke is coming from the earth, and there's nothing in the heaven. So the verse confirmed that everything created first in earth, not in the sky. The sky was zero, and this is Mikathir. <clears throat> I'm I don't know. I don't know what to say, man. Okay, so now, no, we, 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 we did not show you the contradiction yet. We are just uh, saying hello, hold on. So now this verse confirmed, and this is Ibn Kathir, and this is Jalalain, and this is Yuskar saying, Allah created everything in earth before the heaven. That's wonderful. Let us go to a different verse in the Quran, different chapter, and then you will see the disaster. The Quran says,
in the following chapter. Hold on. And now you remember, you said to me, nobody can prove that the Quran have contradiction. The Quran, all of it is a book of contradiction. You made me laugh, my friend. That is the most funny challenge ever that is given to me. All right, let us see. Are you here? Let us read together. Read with me carefully. This is a chapter 79, verse number 27. You can read even 10 verses before, who care? So here, but we are starting with 727 because chapter. it's talking about 20, 79, chapter 79, verse number 27. Yeah. Okay. Read with me. Are you more difficult to create or the heaven? Allah, he constructed. Okay, that's wonderful. He raised its height ah. and he has equal order. Okay, wonderful. And he made its night and he covered its darkness. That's amazing. And after that, he started working in the earth. <laughs> Do you see it? Oh man. <laughs> Are you more difficult to create or is the heaven that he constructed? Oh man. Hmm. Oh. Are you okay, my friend? <laughs> yeah, I'm okay, man. Are you crying? Are you laughing? I don't understand what you are doing. No, I'm, I'm just reading the verse. Okay. So uh, that, that's the Greek contradiction. We just, we just agreed, me and you, that the previous verse says it clearly that Allah he created all that on earth and then he went to the heaven and even the smoke, we showed Ibn Kathir, even the smoke which was in the sky is nothing but from the earth because the earth was bursting with the smoke. Allah is cooking. Here we go. It says here. And the smoke burst out of it from what? Of the earth. So Allah created the earth before the heaven. And when he created the earth, smoke burst out of it. And this is why Allah said, And then he turned up to the heaven and it was a smoke. So the earth was created first, the earth was finished first, and then the sky was still empty, and even the smoke is there, is coming from the earth. In the same time, we just showed you the verse where it says that Allah, he start uh, working in the sky, in the heaven, uh, after, let us close down some pages, too many pages, all right, and after that, he spread the earth. So the heaven was finished uh, totally, first according to this verse and then after that allah he went to the earth and he started doing the following he started making it flat and then he brought forth the water and then he put the mountains so this is total contradiction what do you think Yeah, it's it's <sighs> it, uh, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense, and this is a clear contradiction. I mean, you do not need to be a genius to notice it, right? How can he create the earth and then create the heavens? Exactly. The earth. I mean, how you can create something and you don't have a space for it? Shouldn't you create the space first? <laughs> and aren't we inside? It's like, are, are, it's like creating. Are, uh, Osman, aren't we inside the space right it's now? It's like. We are flying in the space. We are little dust. Yeah. So small, so small. It's so tiny. It's like a, like a, not even the size of a needle compared to the space. So. How this is it happening? This is stupid. This is crazy. So it's as stupid as science. It is as stupid as contradiction. And you are the one who said to me, the Quran says actually that if this is a book is other made by other than Allah, you will find a lot of contradiction. Correct? 
Allah, you said that. Like, how can he create? It's like creating the earth and then the universe. Do you get what I mean? Uh. My friend, it's clear. Actually, I did not even show you. If I go to chapter 7, uh, 41, you will see it even more crazy because the order of a creation is different. Not only the earth first and in the other chapter of chapter 41, your God is so confused. He starts with the creating the earth and then etc. Like, it's, uh, 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 sorry, cre uh, creating the uh, uh, in seven, in, we have 79, we have 49, uh, 14, uh, one, and we have chapter 2. Each one of them is a disaster by itself. And if this is a book is other than Allah, which means from God, then surely you will find much contradiction. The Quran says that. So even the Quran help us to come to a conclusion. If you want to find out if this is a book from God or not, find the contradiction. And you are the one who said to me, I challenge you, Allah, He challenge even the genie, not only the human. So look like I'm smarter than the genie too, not only the human, smarter than Allah. Oh. Uh, uh, somebody in the chat saying, does not say that Allah created the heaven after the earth, but Allah turns to heaven afterward. No, my friend, here we go. This is Ibn Kathir. Don't try to be smart. Here we go. This is Ibn Kathir. Allah created the earth before the heaven. Do you see it? Are you blind? The one who's making comment? Allah created the earth before the heaven. Clear. And then even the smoke is a smoke bursting out of the earth. Because the verse after it says, and then he went to the sky and there was a smoke. So somebody might say, okay, with the smoke, there's a smoke there. The, uh, Ibn Kathir is saying to you, the smoke is brushed out of the earth when Allah was creating it. And here, if you go down, here we go, Sahih al-Bukhari recorded that when Ibn Abbas was a question about this matter, he said, the earth was created before the heaven, and the earth was spread out only after the creation of the heaven. Okay, so the, the Allah, he made the earth flat after he created the heaven, but the earth still was created before the heaven. <laughs> trying to cover the contradiction but that's it it's too late because if we go in the Quran here we go the verse number chapter numbers uh, 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 if we go to chapter 41 let's go there and love together this is chapter 41 it says here the following are you greater or Allah he create like the, the earth in two days okay the earth created in two days wonderful and then and then he put mountains in the top of it and he put in it all substance which means trees etc water okay in four days so this is total of six days earth is done as a creation then earth whatever in the top of the earth is done including putting mountains on top so remember here the second thing Allah he created after creating the earth is the mountains that's wonderful. And then he turned to the heaven. Okay, it was a smoke. Ibn Kathir said, the smoke is coming from the earth. This is not a smoke from the sky. Okay, and then he said to the earth and to the uh, and to the heaven, both come willingly. And then he continued. And then he made them seven skies. And then he created the stars. So what is the last thing Allah created? The lamps. This is the chapter 41, verse number 12. Okay, take a note. The last thing Allah created here in chapter 41, uh, uh, Ahmad, listen, the last thing, take a note. The last thing Allah created in chapter 41, verse number 12, is what? The stars. Do you agree? Yeah. Okay. Let us go to chapter 79 and love together. <laughs> In chapter 79, read with me carefully. 
Remember, the stars are the last one to be created in chapter 41. In chapter 79, the first thing Allah created, it was whatever is in the sky. Read carefully. Are you more difficult to create or the heaven? He constructed and then he raised it above. And then he made the night and the day. This is the lamps. So in the, in the period number three, Allah, he created the stars. And after that, he started working on the earth. And after that, he brought the water. And after that, he put the mountains. So in chapter 79, the last thing Allah, he finished is the mountains. In chapter 41, the second thing Allah created is the mountains. In chapter 41, the last thing Allah created is the stars. In chapter 79, the third thing Allah he did, it was the stars. And look, the verse is so clear. It says, and after that, there's no question. After that. But the chapter number two, and we showed you the verse, it says that Allah created for you everything in earth, and then he went up to heaven, and Ibn Kathir agree, Allah created everything in earth first. <laughs> so what more you want? A clear contradiction than this madness. This is God talking. What do you think, my friend? I think it's time for you to leave Islam. All right, okay, all right, okay, Mr. CP, explain this, okay? Then how does the Quran, how does Allah talks about the embryology and the Big Bang and all these things? Oh, no, nowhere Allah speaking about embryology. He's talking about stupidity. If you go in the Quran, you will see that what the Quran is saying is a joke. Because what he says is that the sperm became a congealed dead blood. And you can go to any, any university in the world and you will see this is silly. Have you ever heard of a God, he said, that claim that the sperm became a dead blood? That is embryology for you? It doesn't, does it, say, it doesn't say that. It says that in front of you. Here we go, read it. This is the chapter 23, verse number 14. Chapter twenty three, chapter twenty three, verse fourteen. <coughs> <coughs> All right, do you read it? Uh. Uh, oh man. Uh, so this is the embryology of, of God? The sperm became a clot? According to your knowledge, <laughs> you, are, you are laughing, right? No. Uh. According to according to science, Othman, how many days the sperm can live? Do you know? According to science? Yeah. How many days the sperm, the semen, can live? Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's one day? Uh, no, actually a few days. You can search Prophet Google, peace be upon him. You can search right now, me and you. How long sperm live in the women, in the body? Let us see what the answer will be. Here we go. I just search Google. It says five days. Correct? It says five days, correct? Yeah. Okay. According to your prophet, how many days? It doesn't say how many days. No, your prophet, he is a doctor, so you know he has ten, tons of uh, YouTube videos. 
He keep talking. At that time, there's no YouTube, but he, there is a hadith. He keep talking. Your prophet, he never stopped talking. So how many days according to your prophet? What do you think? You can guess. What do you think? Like what is, how big is the error of your prophet? Is it a day? Or is it two? Or is it five? So how many days according to your prophet? What do you think? What do you think? Well, it can't be more than five days. All right, here we go. This is otherwise. It's this, is from, this is from Al Bukhari and Muslim, as you see in the screen, and this is the hadith. Your prophet says that the sperm stay inside the mother womb, the semen, for forty days, and then he became. Uh, can I? And then he became a, a, a blood, a congealed blood. 40 days. Can I see? Uh, there's nothing on my screen. Yeah, it's, it should be in your screen. No, why not? Okay, this is Bukhari. This is Bukhari and Muslim. And this is now we are reading from the book of yeah. Riyadh al-Salihin, and he is referring to Bukhari and Muslim, as you see. And this is the hadith number. And here it says, that the Prophet said that a human being, the sperm, the semen, is gathered in the womb of the mother for 40 days. Oh, man. So remember, Uthman, you said to me, prove it first, and I proved to you many things already. So are you willing to say I'm out of time, my friend? Are you a person who keep his promise? Uh, I'm scared. Why you are scared? For my soul. Well, you know, here we go. This guy is a liar. You should be scared if you are stay as a Muslim, not the opposite. It's just to prove it in front of you. This guy is a fraud. So if you are scared, you should leave him. Because obviously he is not going, he cannot save himself. This guy, he will end in hell like, like crazy. This guy will burn for hell like, he, he, he will be punished severely for he mislead billions of people. Do you want to follow a deceiver, my friend, Osman? What do you think, Othman? Man. Remember, you are, Man. The one, you are the one who made the challenge, so I'm, I'm expecting you to say, yes, I'm out of Islam, because this is the promise of a man. And you are a man. Uh, it, uh, look, what I'm reading, and from, 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 uh, from my understanding, it, it's... It, it's bad. Okay. It's um, it's not bad. It, it, it's, it's like I don't understand it. Just because I don't understand something doesn't mean I don't know. Hmm. What do you, I mean? What do you what do you mean to understand? And you are the one who says to me, it's obviously he created the earth first. It's you who said to me, open the Jalalain, we open the Jalalain. It's you who said to me, let's see Ibn Kathir, we saw Ibn Kathir. And Ibn Kathir, he says, the earth first, and etc. So everything we're showing you, not even me saying to you, it's your scholars and the one you choose. And you are the one who mentioned to me in Burji. So we showed you what in Burji says. And you are the one who, when you call me, when text me first time, do you remember what you said to me, Mr. Israel? Like you are so angry from me, you call me Mr. Israel. One minute, Mr. Israel. One yeah, minute. the reason. Yeah, yeah the reason. Uh, the reason why worry, I don't said don't worry, don't Israel. Worry. I don't care. No problem. But now, I mean, you are calling me to get me busted. You are so angry from me. And did I lie to you? Anything I said to you, or I'm showing you on the screen everything? No, you're showing everything to me on the okay, screen. So, it's not a lie. Okay, so it's not a lie. So my friend, it's time for you to be the man. 
You call me. To, okay. to, you call me to fight me. You call me too because you're angry from me. I understand. No problem. But everything I showed you is from your books. It's a stupid. It's not fit for a man like you to believe in such a stupid thing like this. For the sake of respect of yourself, you better leave Islam immediately. And you know, I, I'm getting nothing of this. I mean, what are you, you convert? You don't convert? Who cares? I mean, this is your salvation, not mine. I don't even know you. You don't know me. But it doesn't make any sense. And how could the prophet be the me the best of mankind? Did they lie to you? He was the as best. You, as you see, what, the be of best of, what is the best of mankind? We just showed you. He says, "Go attack the Romans, so we can get the blonde girls." Is that what the best of mankind says? Is that the best? If your neighbor he says to you, "Let us attack the Uthman because he have a blonde daughter." With my respect to your daughter, is that a, is that the best? What he do? Hey, let us attack Uthman house. He have a blonde daughter. What kind of best is that? Because you know the prophet, he was poor. He lived in a small house, but the house doesn't even My have friend, a door. He was poor. He and look what he poor, did. Like, look what he did. He married a woman. She is way older than him because she is rich. Is that true? No. It's what did you know? Khadija? Khadija, yeah, she was in the age of his mother, and she is very rich, and he used to work for her. And and we knew that Arab will not marry people they are yeah. older than them. Why he marry her? She's older than him. Yeah, she. She was, she was a wealthy uh, uh, business. Exactly. Owner. So he married her because of the money, and he did not marry any woman as long as she's alive because she will kick him out. She is the owner of the business. The second she died, he started jumping from woman to a woman. What happened? When he was with Khadija, he was behaving. He did not marry any other woman. The second no. Khadija, uh, all, no, no. He, all the he women didn't, he married. He didn't, he didn't. Uh, uh, all the women he married after Khadija. And let me ask you, how he married Khadija? Uh, sorry, I don't know how he married Khadija. Is it, I don't is know it, the, is the, it, is the it whole true? story. Okay, is it true that he and Khadija, they made the father of Khadija drunk? So the Prophet Muhammad, uh, he made the, uh, Khadija's father drunk. Exactly. So he can approve the marriage? Yes. What do you think about this? Uh, no, that, that can't be. That's not true. Okay, if this is true, That's what not we true. Do? If this is true, what we will do? It's not true. It, it, it can't, it's not true. My friend, if it's true, if I can show you now reference approved by your Islamic scholars, what you would do? You know me, I don't say things just to say things. But at that time, uh, like, oh, I don't know what to say. So he, the Prophet made Khadija's father drunk just to get... Khadija, with the agreement of your Prophet, they made the father drunk and they did not convince him to get, to, to marry them. No, they lied to him. So they made him drunk and then when he wake up, before he wake up, they change his clothing and he said why i'm wearing those clothing they said to him oh because you did marry me uh, to muhammad he said no i did not do that he said no you did and this is how and then he, he took his sword because he was so angry he says no way i'm going to let someone like muhammad marry someone like you and this is telling you that muhammad was not respected as they claim so when when this happened Khadija, she said to him, are you going to make everybody laugh at you? They will say that you made you drunk and, you know, we fooled you. Aren't you afraid the Arab will make fun of you for the rest of your life? What kind of a prophet, he start his life by such a thing? Oh, man. What do you think? That's that's not right. That's not right. So how decent he is, how good. If this is how he started his life, by a fraud.
But how can you use alcohol is, is haram? It's forbidden. The Muslim they will say to you at that time it wasn't haram. Because Muhammad wasn't a prophet yet. So we find a solution, here we go. But still don't want to change anything. Muhammad is a fraud. Even his marriage was by Khamar. The best thing he did in his life supposedly is marrying Khadija because if not her, he will not become a prophet because of her money. He became a prophet. Okay. That, that's kind of true because Khadija, uh, she spent a lot of money for Prophet Muhammad's cause. Exactly. She's the one that convinced exactly. the prophet to continue his prophethood. Exactly. So now... The Khadija, she... So now we understand why Muhammad he married her for the sake of her money. And now we understand that he is an evil man because if he's a decent man, even if the wife, she said, let us make your, my father drunk and lie to him and fool him to marry me to you. He should say, no, that's wrong, correct? But Prophet Muhammad, he was with Khadija until she died. Uh, he was uh, with her till the very end. Because she is the one who owned the business. She will kick him out. He will not inherit the money. He didn't dare to move. He used to work for her, remember? So she is the one who owned it, and he cannot do anything. So when he, when she died, he got the money, inherited everything. But now the topic is, what kind, uh, uh, what kind of a woman... And what kind of a man he do that to his father-in-law in order to become his father-in-law if this is how you start your life <sighs> what do you think It's not a good way. Okay, so what does that mean now? You know, it's not a good way. Is it? Is it a? a, a is that how a person? Is that how a person who claimed to be a prophet of God, to do such a thing? This is the, this is a person who is supposed to because best, he is the best of mankind, right? He is the best of mankind. Yeah, he he is the best of mankind, okay. and we should follow his so, um, how the best of mankind his examples his life. Okay, his how the best of mankind he do such a thing? I don't know how to explain it. Hmm. Until now, by the way, you did not ask me to show the reference. Don't you want to see it? Look like you are convinced I don't lie because of no. in the beginning you were so upset and you want to see and you know you don't believe you know what if I show it to you from the book of Ibn Kathir no this is the no book. because I heard I heard about this story before all right this is the book of Ibn Kathir but I didn't know it this is the book true. of Ibn Kathir Uthman this is the book of Ibn Kathir Al Bidaya wa Nihaya Vari number two Page number 361. Even Ibn Kathir speak about it. She did dress him. She color his beard blonde. Nothing is showing on my screen. You will see it. Nothing is showing on my screen. You will see it in a second. Here we go. The book of Al-Bidaya and Nihaya. I'm showing it in Arabic. And now I'm going to click and translate to English. Here we go. So you can see. She, she changed the color of his beard. This is Shia. No, this is just a Shia. This is from Shia. No, this is Shia website, but the but the book is the book of Ibn Kathir. This is just a website library, you know. This is just a library. Oh, okay. Ibn Kathir. See, it says Ibn Kathir, part number two, very number two, page number three six one. So she dressed her father, she colored his beard with yellow, and she made him drink wine. She drunk him. Do you see it? Uh, I, I, wait, just one second. It's not showing my screen yet. Hmm. Khadija father's a suit and his beard and his... Because the Arab, you know, when they get when they have a wedding party, they do this. So Khadija, look how evil she is with Muhammad. They made the man drunk. When he's drunk, they color his beard. They, made, they change his clothes. And then when he wake up, he said, why am I wearing this clothes? 
She said, what, you forgot? Last night we have a party, you married me to Muhammad. He said, no, I did not. <laughs> and even the story here says, was, and she made her father drink wine to drunk, get drunk. Hatta thamila. What kind of prophet he is. And this is Ibn Kathir. And there's tons of books speaking about the same story. Look how many books, look. <sighs> look, all of those books are speaking about this story. What kind of prophet he is. But... History of Damascus. <laughs> look at this. But what... Maybe it's a fabrication because at my that friend, time my friend, the my prophet friend, my friend, Muhammad he was my, my, my friend Ibn he wasn't a prophet that Ibn Kathir and your Muslim scholars they will write a story which is a lie about Muhammad. Imagine I go now in TV and I make a story up about Muhammad and I live in Islamic countries they will kill me in two seconds you know that. Anyone killed Ibn Kathir anyone yeah. killed anyone. No. Anyone kill those who wrote this story? You know what they killed them? Why? Because this is what the story is. The scholars, no, they, are, right. they are proud about Muhammad for doing that. He's a wonderful, he's a smart. He deceived his father-in-law. He made him a drunk, oh. you know? <sighs> this is a religion of God, and this is a prophet of God. If this is a prophet of God, so what the scam is? So my friend, is it time for you to say I am out of Islam? Be honest. It's hard, man. You don't understand. It doesn't matter how hard it is. If it's false, it's false. I mean, who cares about how hard it is? You know, I mean, uh, there's nothing. Who said it's easy? But is it false or not? If Islam is false, it's false. If it's good, it's good. And it doesn't need to do with hard and easy. Then, then why do Muslims say that the Prophet Muhammad he is the best of mankind? Because they worship him. He's the are, best. My friend, he's the this best. is all a propaganda. Who dare to question? The second you question, you find. The second you read the books and you question, you find that this is absolutely false. Isn't it your Prophet? He went to his own son house when the wife she was alone and he flirted with her. What do you think if your father? Come on, your man! House? Don't say that, man. We, are, we don't want to open a story after a story. That's not true. This is absolutely true. What if I show you what you will do? Are we going to keep jumping like monkeys? Because look like you will not you will not say I'm out of his time. I keep showing you things one after one after one and you are making excuse. So you're telling me that the Prophet Muhammad he but the Prophet Muhammad he never had a son. <clears throat> no, he only had daughters. No, he have a son from adoption. His name is Zaid and the Quran speak about him. From a his he has an adopted son. Yes. He went to his son wife when she was alone and he flirted with her. He saw her wearing see-through clothes and he said, Praise be to Allah, the, the, the one who made my heart flip for you. See, now, now, now you're just saying that he didn't flirt with him, didn't flirt with her. Well, I am not the one who is saying that. You know, this is what your religion is saying, my friend. This is what your book says. I'm going to make a final offer. If I show you what I am saying right now, am I going to have a promise of a man to leave Islam or you are just, you know, wasting my time? In the front of everybody. Oh, man. If I show you Muhammad, he went to the house, he found Zainab, and it says that he saw Zainab and she was standing and she was very white and she is big and beautiful from the most perfect women of Quraysh. Fahawiha. You know what Hawiha mean? No, I don't, I don't know Arabic words. Okay, Hawiha mean he loved her. Here we go, read with me carefully. 
<laughs> this is this is tafsir al qurtubi this can't be true man that can't, this can't be true oh, man don't waste my time my friend this is al qurtubi in front of you page number four three four two three and this is the official government website of the kingdom of saudi arabia i'm going to post it in the chat and here it says that the messenger of allah i can't see anything you will see it in a second it says وَقَالَ مقاتل, uh, صلى الله عليه وسلم زينب بنت جحش مين زيد. so the prophet he married uh, uh, Zainab to uh, to Zaid and and she lived with him and then one day peace be upon him he came to Zaid seeking him and he saw Zainab standing and she was white and big and beautiful from the most perfect women of Quraysh فهويها. for he fell in love with her he lost he have a lost with her and then he said praise be to Allah the one who made my heart flip for you so Zainab she heard him praising Allah for her beauty so she told Zaid Zaid he said to her, he went to Muhammad he said please let me divorce her he noticed that his father is a flirting and maybe he is having sex with his wife already let's click in the front of everybody and translate to Google translation shall we do that do you want me to give you the link in pal talk so you can do it on your side let me give it to you uh, no no i will give it to you here we go i will give you yes yeah, sir okay go in there and when you open, yeah, it, open, open it with google browser you know any google browser and then you click in the side of the page give me one the second. let me translate it yeah and then you click at google and you will find it says a click in the white space because in the middle there's a script will not allow it to go to translation click here in the side says translate to english here we go and then you will see it says the following in order to find it right away search for the word, search for the word white after you translate to english search for the white word white you will see it says here that uh, uh peace be upon him which means muhammad he came to zaid one day seeking him yeah. seeking for him so Zainab, yeah, he saw, yeah. so he saw Zainab standing and she was so was a, a beautiful white and massive you know the Arab at that time they used to like the women who they are big like I don't want to use the word fat but the bigger they are the more healthy they are so if a woman she is skinny nobody will marry her she's sick you know so at that time if she is so big that's that's that that is the one so she's so big she's massive and she is so white. This is what every man want in the Arab time. So, and was the most perfect woman of Quraysh. Look how big she is. So he not blow her. He fall in love with her. He sorry. He have lost with her. Hawiha. Translation. He is saying blow her. And he said, A "Glory to Allah, the one who made my heart break for you, or flip my heart for you." Do you see it? yeah man i see it okay and then zaid she came you know and zainab she heard him she heard what he said so she told her husband and the husband right away he got it okay i got it uh, my father is sleeping with my wife already and obviously she is a whore because a woman she have honor she will say to him shame on you to flirt with married women only a whore she will not open her mouth against such a statement she heard the guy she heard the guy in her house and he is the father of her husband and he is a flirting with her she like it she love it and not only that Zainab she said that after that Allah each time her husband he tried to have sex with her Allah he made his penis swell Allah he made the penis of the husband swell oh man this is too much hmm. but at least Allah he made the miracle he made the penis of the guy swell you know think about it that's an amazing miracle thank God I'm not married otherwise if Muhammad liked my wife my penis would end so swelling I cannot handle that
This is just really bad, man. Read carefully this here with me. This is just bad. Read carefully with me here, it says. Zainab, obviously, she is a whore. She is promoting, she is claiming that this is a miracle from God, she said. Uh, oh. That that in the narration of Zaid, that Zaid, his, his penis is swell. You see, the translation is very, very funny. So Zaid, is, uh, his penis is swell. Each time he tried to have sex with her, he get it close to her, his penis get big. He swell. Oh, it's hurting. And she said that this is happening because of Allah. Do you see it? You have a God who make penises swell, my friend Uthman. You have a very unique God. Oh, this is... Okay, so is it time for you to say I'm out of Islam, Uthman, or what? If I leave, they will kill me. Well, my friend, nobody knows who you are anyway. So, actually, you leave or not, if you say I'm leaving or not, already you left, I can't tell. You are just scared to say it. That's all the story. You're already out. You said it's silly, you said it's stupid, you said this doesn't make sense, you said this is bad. I mean, what is more to agree? Already you left Islam. And nobody knows who you are. You are out. Because here, if what? because here, if I leave the religion, they will kill me or put me in prison. My friend, you do not need to tell them until God he opened doors for you. Maybe you leave to a different country, God will open doors for you. But don't be a fool and follow a fool. That's not the right thing to do. How could he be a prophet if he does these things? He cannot. That's what I'm saying. Then why are there so many Muslims and so many people uh, converting from Christianity to Islam? They are a bunch of fools. So uh, uh, the, all of this the second they see the truth, my friend, they leave. And that's what happened to you today. You call, you know, you you insulted me when you start talking to me. You call me Mr. Israel. And look at you now. What happened? You call me Mr. Israel. The first text you gave me, it was Mr. Israel. You are here to debate with me because supposedly I am a liar according to you. So all those who they claim to be converting, they are a bunch of fools. Either they are foolish or uh, they are seeking a benefit. You know, there's many like in YouTube. They knew if they say they convert to Islam, a lot of subscribers, a lot of ad, a lot of donation. It's a business. But for us, it's not. Not for you, not for me. If I am you, I will not hesitate. Already you are out of Islam. What are you what are you waiting for? So what? There's not God doesn't exist? No God doesn't exist. No, absolutely God exists. Who said that? I never say that. I'm a Christian. I believe in God. Absolutely I believe in God. If God is not is not exist, I will not be exist. So, but you live in man God, Jesus. Well, you know, you man know, God. Let us talk about this after we finish with you regarding if you are living Islam or not. Are you living Islam or not? I'm not asking you yet to believe in Jesus. I did not say anything about Jesus yet. Let us finish what we started. Based on what we provide to you and what you saw with your own eyes, Allah cannot be God. Do you agree? Yeah. Okay, thank it, you very it, much. It can't be the word of God. All right, thank you. I'm happy for you that you left Islam. Now let's go about Jesus. I'm very happy to our friend Uthman. I pray to the Lord. He will open his eyes more. He will open his heart more. And he will believe in the truth and the truth will set him free. Now let us talk about Jesus. You said you believe in the God who is a man, correct? Yeah, and that Mary is the mother of God. That so what? God has mother, father, okay, sister. Okay, I, I will go with you. No, when we say uh, Mary is the mother of God, simply she is the mother of Jesus, who was born as a man. But because Jesus is God, so people they say the mother of God. But the fact God have no mother. This is why you see when Jesus he speak to Mary, 
and if he when he speak to others like he never called his mother mother can you believe it he never said to his mother mother when she came to him and she asked him to do a miracle in the wedding there's a wedding he said to her what do you want from me women ask anyone what kind of a person he said to his mother women why he said to her women did you ask yourself for he is the lord of this woman so he is born of the women yes but he is not from any he is not the son of any man he is not the son of any woman he is born from her by the flesh this is why you see jesus says i am from above you are from below so if god is being a man is a problem then god cannot be god anyway because if god cannot be whatever he wished to be then god cannot be powerful and almighty do you understand what i'm saying yeah one thing that that never made sense for me okay in the quran it says that uh, because i spoke to my sheikh about this uh, this verse in the quran it says that uh, that isa is the word of god I spoke to my sheikh about this. I, th I told him, what does this mean? He says that this just means he's the messenger, like the messenger of God. Hmm. But, but uh, it doesn't but, make sense. But Muhammad is not the word of God, correct? I told him, I told him what about uh, Prophet Muhammad? He said, all of them are, are, are the word of God, but it doesn't say in the Quran that he's the word of God. It just says Isa is the word of God. Exactly. Only one person. And when I tell them, when I, when I, there's only one person. And when I told him friend. about this, he said, yeah, he says that, that the word of God, it means that he's just a messenger. Hmm. But that's but mean, it's, but, but that's it's mean illogical. But Muhammad should be the word of God then too. But as you know that this is a title only given to Jesus. He is the only person who is called the Word of God. And this is in total agreement with the book of John, chapter number one, verse number one. It says in the beginning it was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word is the God. And then in verse number 14 it says, and the Word became a flesh, that is Jesus. So Jesus is the Word of God. Can you show me it on screen? Huh? <clears throat> Sorry? What what did you can I look it up? What where can I find that? Yeah, you can go to John chapter one. John chapter one. John chapter one. John chapter one. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God. Yeah, that's exactly and, what the Quran says. And the word is what? Do you see with me what it says? And the word the is word, what? And the word is what? The word is God. It was God. So it says here was. Do you see the word was? Yeah. Okay. What, what, what happened here with this was? Why it says was? Because the word later in verse number 14 says became a flesh. That is Jesus. The word became flesh. So Maybe. Muhammad is a thief. He stole that from the chapter, from, from the book of John. That Jesus is the word of God, which became a flesh. It's a word sent by Allah down to Mary. And that word became a man. His name is Jesus. Wonderful. Now, as long the word of God is God, that means Jesus is the word of God. He's God. God and his word is one. If you ask any Muslim, and you, are, you used to be a Muslim five minutes ago, is the word of God created? They would say no. So is Jesus created? No. He's not. He's born of Mary. He's not created. He exists before Abraham. Jesus says, before Abraham I am. If you go to John, the same chapter, we, the same book we are reading from, if you go to John, read it from chapter, read chapter 8. Verse number 23, 24, 25, 26, etc. You will see Jesus say something very strange. He said to them, you are from beneath, I am from above. You are of this world, I am not of this world. Do you see it, my friend, this man? Do you see it? Don't the shake, they lie, they say, uh, nothing, 
don't they shake their lie they say where Jesus says I am God no. they lie he said I am from above I'm not from this they, world they... is Muhammad from is Muhammad from above no is Adam from above no Jesus made it clear you are from beneath speaking to human being in front of him the Jews I am from above I am from different place you are of this world I am not of this world how clear we can make it and then who's the one talking Jesus so Uthman think with me if God decide to be something are you going to say to him why you can't be that are you going to question I mean the second you believe in God to be almighty do you believe God was almighty or is limited yeah God is okay so no, no, he's almighty he's okay powerful. almighty mean he can be whatever he wish that's what the almighty mean so when the Muslim they say God can't be a man that's mean God cannot be God too because God can be whatever he is no but what I mean I, what I, Muslims I, say yeah. well, what, what, what Muslims say is that saying that God cannot be a human because it doesn't fit his majesty. Exactly. Thank you it's very much. Like a... let, let, let us see how that works. So because it doesn't fit his majesty, he can't be a human. So that's not because he is cannot be a human, but because it doesn't fit his majesty. Okay, what happened if you became a human? Jesus in the Quran, chapter 19, verse 19, he is a human, yet the Quran says he's holy. How he is holy if he is a human? Not a single place in the Quran says Muhammad is holy. Actually, the Quran says that may Allah forgive to Muhammad your past sin and your sin to come. But in the case of Jesus, Jesus is born holy. Jesus, not only he is a person who did tons of miracles, he himself is the miracle. Correct? But isn't it God is a miracle? Yeah, that's correct. Okay, Jesus is a miracle. He is the miracle. Not, not only he do miracles, he is the miracle. And that is God. In chapter 48, the chapter of opening Al-Fatih, Allah speaking, saying to Muhammad, may Allah forgive your sin in the past and in the future to come. In the case of Jesus, look what Jesus says about himself in the Quran. Muhammad, he have a wish from Allah. Maybe a wish. May Allah forgive your sin. In the case of Jesus, when Jesus was born, he says, peace be upon me. You know the verse? You know what it says? Peace be upon me. Can you send me? Peace be upon me, the day I am born, the day I die, and the day I am resurrected. Jesus, he is in peace. He do not need forgiveness of sin. You see what peace mean here? Peace mean that this person is yeah. above mankind because all men, they pray to God to receive the peace of God, not the anger. Because the one who received peace of God, he is always in a favor place for God. This person, his name is Isa, he's just born, he's just a child, baby, and he says, peace be upon me. And actually, this is about Yahya too. Look like the family of, uh, of uh, Jesus, they are always in special treatment. If you read, oh, I quote for you the end verse, the, the verse I meant it is a chapter 19, verse number 33, 33. peace be upon me. Who is saying that? Jesus. You see, if you go to the verse about Yahya, it says, peace be upon him. In the same, in the, in, in, when Jesus speaks, he says, peace on me. <laughs> How Jesus can offer peace to himself? Peace on me. Listen, listen. When, when the Quran mm -hmm. speaks about Yahya, which is supposed to join the Baptist, huh? in verse number 19. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it says, peace be on him. So it's not Yahya giving himself the peace, it's Allah giving Yahya the peace, correct? 
That's correct. Okay. We go, and a few verses after, we will see the same verses about Jesus. It says, peace be on me. Okay, how that work? How peace be on me? How Jesus received peace from who? From himself? He must be God. So, chapter 9, 1915 is about uh, John the Baptist. Chapter 19, verse number 33 is about Jesus. In the case of Jesus, is not peace on him. Peace on me, the day I was born, and the day I die, and the day I shall be raised. And here we have a problem. Peace be upon me, the day I die. <laughs> Peace be upon me the day I am born. Peace be upon me the day I am resurrected. Peace, whatever Jesus is. He is dead, he is alive. He is a human, he is the word of God. It doesn't matter. Peace on me. Who is receiving peace? Jesus. From who? From Jesus. For this is God. In the case of John the Baptist, Peace on him, not on me. If you go back to verse number 15. In the case of Jesus, peace on me, not on him. Why? Because simply, Jesus is different. And Jesus, as the man, still he can do what God do. He resurrected people from death. Even the Quran says he created from the mother bird. So how come the Muslim, they remember that Jesus was a man, and they forgot that the man, he did what God can do. And if Allah gave Jesus the power to do create creatures, what kind of God he shared the creation with someone else? If the Muslim, you ask the Muslim, who is, who is God? He said the creator. Well, Jesus is the creator. If the Muslim want to say Allah, he gave him the power, first of all, prove it. Secondly, it doesn't matter if he gave him proof, uh, uh, power or not, still he's a creator. Right now, as we speak, these birds are created because, by yeah, Jesus. Right. Yeah. So, my friend, Jesus being a man does not change anything, still he's God. He's in control of the nature. He's in control of the creation. He's, for, he's forgiving sin. He can make the blind see. He can tell you what you had in your houses, and this is always mentioned in the Quran. He can heal the leper. People, they touch him, they get healed. Jesus can feed thousands of people from nothing. I mean, did you ask yourself, why all of those things about Jesus and Muhammad have zero? So my friend, because in the Quran, the Prophet Muhammad, he didn't perform any miracles. Exactly. Why? Because he's a fraud. Then, because he's a fraud. You have no proof. Miracles is the proof that you are sent by God. People, they ask for a miracle for a reason. Well, if you are from God, let God support you and give you a miracle. So Jesus, he is just born. He is just one second old. And he is talking in the cradle. But but my sheikh, um, he told me that uh, on uh, during Moses' time, it was the it was about wonders and stuff like, and during uh, Prophet Isa's time, it was about miracles and things like that, and during Prophet Muhammad's time, it was it was about literacy, literacy. Do you know what I mean? So like my they friend, say that the my, Quran my, my, is my the, friend, my friend, my friend. The, let us let us let us go by this stupid argument. Uh, First of all, the Quran is a silly but, book. But, but, but Any, anyone, anyone who speaks Arabic, he knew the Quran is a stupid book. There's nothing about amazing language. And even the Arab in the time, they said to him, if we want to make a book like this, we can, but we will not. Same time, let us go for the sake of argument. You are saying to me that Shakespeare must be God, because Shakespeare, he wrote a book. I cannot write. Can you write a book like Shakespeare? You cannot. So what nah, can what can like, what can like excuse saying, my, my, my friend yeah, like my friend saying, this is an excuse because all yeah. the prophet of God they have miracles if if the if the book of God is a miracle well that goes for all the prophets so all the prophet of God they have book of God and you, can you make a book a book like the book of yeah, God uh, uh, Uthman, can a Muslim can make the the same as the book which he given to Moses nobody can do that right. He will say no. No. Okay. Not. So that's yeah, all, all the books given to the so prophet. So all the prophets given to the books, their yeah. books are miracles. So why the Quran only 
is the only miracle Muhammad have if it's a miracle, which is not. And we just showed you the Quran is full of errors, yeah, it, contradictions, stupidity, science. Yeah, it, so what is the miracle yeah. there in the same time? Yeah, I read it. It's uh, illogical. And my sheikh says that the Prophet Muhammad, he split the moon, but that's a I lie. researched that, that, it. That, is a lie. that was a lie. No, the Quran doesn't say so. Yeah. You know? It doesn't say so. The Quran says the moon is split oh. and judgment day is near, which is a false prophecy. <laughs> so, my friend, I don't know if you want to believe or not, but my duty is as a Christian to invite my friend Uthman, who I spent some good time with you, and I broke my back. By the way, I have a very bad pain in my back right now because I should not be staying for long. I have an injury, but I am praying to the Lord that today you will receive his salvation and my time was not wasted so my brother Uthman I invite you to accept the Messiah as your Savior oh man Jesus his name is amazing his words is amazing. His act is amazing. Everything is about him is amazing. So, what is left? So the Messiah, he can save me. No one else can save you. No one. Not me. Not angels. No one. No prophets. Nobody. Only Jesus. I invite you, Uthman, because your soul, your soul is a gift being given to you, and you might lose it today. I might lose it today too. I might go now to sleep. You never know. I might not wake up. Who knows? Who knows what will happen a second ago or a second after? In the other day. I was just doing carrying some stuff and suddenly I have an extreme pain in my muscles. I felt like I'm dying. Extreme pain. And I said, Lord, if, if, if I cannot even walk. This is how easy human being can be damaged. A second before I felt like a hero. I'm so strong. I can carry a refrigerator. A second after hardly I can walk. Honest to God, hardly I can even lift my leg. This is how easy human being can be damaged and gone. History. And your name, it might be remembered in the book of God as a one being saved, or might be remembered in the book of God as someone who don't deserve to be saved. Which one you want to be? I'm scared for my soul. This is why you have to, you have to decide. This is why, you know, uh, uh, we, we we think we are young. We are not going to die tomorrow, uh, you know. But there is many people that die. They are infant, correct? How many infants yeah. die every year? Infant. You never, you never know. You never know. So if I am young, doesn't you mean never I'm know. Not. exactly. So my friend, Islam is discovered now for you. But you know, for everybody, Islam is a scam. So what you would do? Look, even the Quran, chapter three, verse number one eighty three. They say to him that Allah, he made a covenant with us not to believe in any messenger unless he made an offering. And then Allah, he sent the fire from heaven to consume it, which means is a sign to agree that Allah, he sent this person. The Quran says so. It's an order was given CP, to the Jews. Can you show me where the... Yes, my friend. Uh, CP, hmm. can you show me where in the Bible, like, how can Jesus uh, save me? Well, we have uh, tons of places in the Bible. You know, you can go right now with me, go to Google, and says, you know, where Jesus says, how, how I can be saved by Jesus. Jesus says, I am the door. I am the Alpha. I am the Omega. Come to me, those who are tired, and I will comfort you. I am the truth, no salvation but by me. Whoever believe in me and I will live, 
This is what Jesus said. So we have tons of verses in the Bible, Jesus saying, promising, not maybe, not maybe. It is a guarantee by Jesus and by his name. It's not even like so, so maybe. I'm listening, my friend. What do because you, you know the thing. Because you know the thing in Islam is like, like you never know whether, like, even if you're a good Muslim and you perform all the best deeds, you do all the fight, you you do everything right, you you're still not guaranteed. Yeah, uh, Jannah. You know, you're you know, still not guaranteed to ever. Uh, 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 my friend, uh, Uthman, I don't know if you watch my videos. We show always that Muhammad, he says, that your destiny is written before Allah, he created you. So it is guaranteed where you will go before you are made, but it's not guaranteed to you. It's guaranteed as Allah, he decided before he created you. You know what I mean? When it, when an is this the same? Is this the same principle in Christianity? No, is this the no, same principle no, no, in Christianity? No, no. That no, no, this is why, this is why, uh, uh, in like, if you go to the book, uh, and let, let, let us show you some verses. In the book of John, as an example, John 14. In John 14, it says, verse number, uh, I think, 6. Let me, let me check. Oh, give me a second. John... 14. All right. Okay. Read with me carefully, Uthman. Jesus says unto him, I am the way, I, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Do you see it? You know that, uh, you know, you used to know ten, if you... 10 minutes ago, right? So, Allah, supposedly, he is the truth, Al-Haq, right? One of his names. That is a story from Jesus. Jesus is the truth. And by saying he is the truth, he is well, saying, I am know, God. So, I am the truth, and I am what? I am the life. Is it all life coming from God, Uthman? Wow. Isn't it all life coming from God? Jesus just said, Jesus said unto him, I, I am, am the, the truth, truth, I am the life. And the life. And no one can come to the Father. He meant going to, to, to the kingdom of the Father, the heaven, except by me. So the salvation is only exclusive by Jesus. No prophet, no no one, no me, not, not anyone, no priest, wow. no bishop. It says it so clear. But like, what do you have to do? Like, like so... Like, what do you have to do as, as a Christian? Like The first thing to do is to believe in like, Jesus. You, Listen, Uthman, faith, faith is number one key to be with God, faith on Him. So, when you have faith, you have the key of salvation. Faith of a truthful person, that means he believe in what Jesus said and he do what Jesus said. Not only I say Shahada, and then I do and do all the garbage stuff, and then I go and I touch the black stone, and then Allah forgive my sin. So you are with Jesus, you believe in Jesus, will you believe in what Jesus said, and you follow. He said, be holy like my father. He said, uh, uh, if somebody asks you for your coat, give him your dress. He said, love your enemy. So if you believe in Jesus, you believe in what Jesus stands for, love and peace. Being beautiful with your parents, with your family, being beautiful with everybody around you, loving everybody. That is Jesus. So when you say, I believe in Jesus, you don't believe in a name. You believe in a life. This is why Jesus said in front of you, I am the life. For I will give you a new life when you believe in me. Not only new life in the hereafter, but life now, he will change you.
What do you think? Well, yeah. What, what? Do you accept the Messiah? Oh, wow. Yeah, I accept him, man. Hallelujah. Accept him. Hallelujah. Oh, what a beautiful oh, night. <laughs> what a beautiful night. You call I'm me. Sorry. You call me. I'm Mr. so happy, Israel. man. You call me Mr. Israel when you call me, when you text me first time. You insulted me, right, Mr. Israel? Look what happened to you. I mean, isn't it amazing the Lord is? You contacted me to insult me. You contacted me to put me down. You contacted me to get me busted, supposedly. And look what happened. The Lord save you, my friend. Your anger, your hatred nah. switch into something different. You just said, I'm so happy. Tell me about what you feel. I don't know. Like I got like goosebumps all over my body because I'm also sick as well. But I just got this rush of energy and if it feels amazing. My friend, I can hear actually from the beginning, I feel like, you know, you are, that's why I was saying you are okay. I, I can tell that you are ill. And now it is a chance for us, all of you Christians, please pray for our brother Osman so he can be healed in his name. And he is powerful. He is able. He can do it. No one else can do it. So we pray in his name to heal you, to touch you, to refresh your heart, not only your body, so you can live and be a new person with the Lord, with the Messiah. Osman and your life been given to you today, my friend. Honest to my, my honest to my lord, Mr. CP, my, sorry. My, my back is hurting me so bad. It's hurting me in a very, very bad way. But even though you made me so happy, I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful for the Lord to send you to me. No, no. For the Lord, He made me happy to serve you, my brother. The Lord, He wants us. He says, if you want to be a master, you are a servant. The servant is the master in Christianity, not the opposite. So I'm so happy to serve you today. CP, I just want to... No, CP, I am happy, man. I am grateful for for what you have shown me. I was ignorant. But you, you showed me the truth, man. Like everything you showed me and everything you said was the truth. It's It wasn't a lie. You weren't, you weren't making things up. I'm so happy for you, my friend. I don't know what but, to say. Uh, but now, but now I'm scared. Like, do I tell my parents? Do you know what I mean? Because here, like, if you leave the 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 dean, if you leave the religion, they they will either uh, imprison you or they will execute you. My friend, it's I, I not leave, safe. I will leave your security for you. You do what you think is smart. The Lord. He asked us to be honest, and at the same time, he asked us to be smart. So if your life will be in danger, if you go in the street and you say, I am, I am out of Islam, so don't do that. Wait, you are a believer, and believe in your heart. It's not something in appearance. We are not hypocrites who will go in the corners and shout like what the Muslims do. So I will leave what is for your security for you to decide when it's time for you to announce that you're a Christian or when it's not right to do so. And maybe we pray that the Lord will open doors for you. Maybe you leave to a different country. Maybe I don't know what you would do. I'm not going to ask you anything about yourself. I don't want anyone to know anything about you. But you decide what is right for you, my friend. And the Lord will be with you. The Lord is with you. But just be smart. Yeah. You know, it's not like I don't want you to go say, hey, I became a Christian. And no, don't do that. No, no, don't do that. You see, the Lord, He value your life. But I want to save my brothers. Well, you, I want to save my brothers save, and my you, sisters. You can save them. You start talking to them. Don't say anything about, now you decide what you decide. Start sharing with them ideas. Start sharing them with them what you, what you think is right. Show them the mistakes in the Quran. And when it's time to come, you tell them, they leave Islam and then you offer them Jesus. You tell them, well, you know what, I'm a Christian. I want you to be saved with me. I want you to follow the Messiah, who's, you know, who, the only Savior. 
you don't have to say things right away just wait for the right time there is no there is no name better than the name Jesus. I mean to that. That's the truth. I cannot agree more. More, you know. With That's you. the truth. Yeah. Even actually, even the Muslims. I remember when I was in the Middle East. I... They say to me things I could not understand. I remember once, a friend of mine. He's a Muslim. He's a very nice guy. He said to me, "You Christians have God, but you don't have faith, and we Muslims have faith, but we don't have God." Now this guy is way older than me, but we go on like, you know, we, you know, we go for, he likes shooting, I like shooting since we were kids. He had many guns, we have many guns. So we go together, we enjoy shooting. And then one day he said that to me and I could not understand it. What this guy is saying to me, you have God, but you don't have faith. And we have faith, but you don't, we don't have God. And then way after I spoke to him again, I said, listen, once you said to me this, and I think, uh, you know, because he's older than me. So I think I, I think you, you are saying that we have the true faith, right? The true God. He says, yes, you have the true God. This is what, the, what my dad says to me. This is what my mom says to me. That we Muslims, we have faith, but we don't have God. And he was talking about Christians who don't follow God no more. He was saying, we don't see you praying. We don't see you following. We don't see you, etc. You know, talking to me is talking about the Christian in general. So you have God, but you don't have faith. We have faith, you don't, we don't have God. So which one should we care for? Well, having God first, because if you don't have the true God, your faith is, 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 a, is a waste. Faith. You already failed. Yeah, you're, you already failed. And he is from a very Sunni family, very, very, very conservative Sunni family. And I was shocked when he said to me that his mother, she said that to him. His father said that to him, that they have God, but they don't have faith. We have faith, but we don't have God. That is Islam, my friend. And that is an, a message to all the Christians who have God, but don't have faith. The Muslims are jealous from you because you are the one who have the true God. They go, they pray five times a day, they do rituals, the, but there's no God in their religion. That's the thing with Islam. Even if you pray five times per day, you pay zakat, you do all these things, your salvation is not secured. You still may end up in hell, you know? You're, yeah. you're, you're truly not saved. Even if you do all these things, you're still not saved. My friend, do you know the hadith about... The distance of a cupid you know that the hadith i don't know for how long you're watching my videos but uh, Muh but muhammad he said i don't know yeah muhammad he said that you know when we said to you i showed you that uh, the the sperm is uh, in the mother womb for 40 days the same hadith it says yeah really yeah. carefully here we go it says here that by allah he swear muhammad by allah a person among you may do the deeds of people of the, the fire until there is only a cupid or an arm breathe distance between him and the fire and then and then what is written by allah allah has ordered the angels to do proceed and he does the deeds of people of paradise in the interior so it's not your deed it's not what you work it's what's written for you and then he continues saying the opposite and a man may do the deeds of people of paradise till there's only a cupid or two between him and paradise and then that is written proceed and he does the deeds of people of fire and he enter so at the end of the day is what allah wrote for you is not what you do so all of islam is a joke because you pray you don't pray who care it's what allah wrote for you at the end of the day here we go the guy he was doing the deed of paradise yeah. All his life praying, all his life is worshipping, all his life doing jihad, and then what is wrought by Allah will take over and he go to hell. Where is justice? It's just a you know, good luck. Yeah, that. So my friend Uthman, you are with me for long, and I'm sure you are tired. You tell me you are sick, and actually me, myself, I am really, uh, uh, you know, uh, sitting for long. I want to say thank you very much. Do you want to say anything for those Christians? Do you want to say any message to them? Do you want to say anything to the Muslims? I just want to say to the Muslims, they, they just got to open their hearts and not be ignorant. Don't, if they're, 
if their evidence is right in their face, they have to read it. Do you get what I mean? Because God is He's not deceitful. He will show you the truth. He will, he, he will show you the way. Do you get what I mean? That's the one of the biggest thing uh, thing about the Quran is say it says that the Quran is it's easy to understand. It's very easy to understand. But the thing is, the Quran is not easy to understand. It's a big headache. You can't understand it. Even if you understand it, you have to read the hadith. You have to speak to the sheikh. You have to know what the context is about. It's just a big headache. Actually, uh, uh, Uthman, even the Quran says nobody understands the Quran save Allah. You know that? You, you know that? Uh, I'll take your word for it. Yeah, I'll take your word for it. If it says that, I'll take your word for well, it. Yeah. Know, I don't say things unless it's true, right? So here we go, chapter 3, verse number 7. It's it true. says It says that there's a huge part of the Quran. Nobody knows what it means, save Allah. Read it. Hmm? Here we go. It says there's yeah. verses in the Quran, uh, uh, which is confusing, and seeking their meaning, explanation. None knows the explanation of those verses, save Allah. So why Allah is in them? If the if the Quran is the book of guidance, you send me a book full of nobody can understand save Allah. This is Muhammad the thief. He was writing, he was copying from the book of Waraq ibn Nawfal. He put it in the Quran. People they ask him what this is mean, he don't know. This is what happened when you are a thief. Like now I wrote a book and then I copy from your book. Let's say I don't know anything about mathematics and I copy from your book a mathematics uh, issue and then I put it in my pages, claim that this is from me. You ask me a question about it, I have no idea to say. This is exactly what happened to Muhammad. Only Allah knows what he meant. So why Allah is in the trust? Yeah. So, so Uthman, thank you very much. That's my true, CP. Thank you for being here, and I pray. Do you want to pray with me to the Lord, my friend? Yes, please. Let's pray. Let us pray, me and Uthman and all of you. Let us put our head down and let us close our eyes and let us say, "Oh Lord, Oh Lord, take the hand of Uthman and guide him. Oh Lord, be with him. Oh Lord, be with his family. Open their heart." Open the way for them. Let them see the truth, and the truth will set them free. You said, I am the truth. You said, I am the way. So lead them in the way, and don't leave them alone. You, Lord, you open the eyes of the blind. You, Lord, you hear the leper. You, Lord, you hear the one who is dying and sick. You, Lord, you open the eyes and make the one who cannot walk, walk. You, Lord, you can give a new heart. And today you give a new heart to our brother Uthman. So give a new heart to his family to his mother, to his father, to his children, to all everyone around him. Let him be touched by Uthman. Let Uthman lead the way and let him be a light in his house, in his community, for your glory. In his name we pray. Thank you, Uthman, for being with us. May the Lord bless you. Thank you, CP. Uh, thank you, CP, for the prayer. I don't know if you believe this, but for the first time, I feel like I have sense of security. Do you get what I mean? Like, I don't feel, I don't fear death. I mean, my friend. I don't fear for my soul. I believe you. I believe you. Like, it's... I don't know, I don't know, I don't know how to explain it. Like, I have this sense of security, like, like nothing will happen to me. My friend, nothing will happen to you, because whatever happened to you, you will be with Jesus anyway. You see people, they threaten me, they want to kill me every day. Do you think, like, everybody can be killed, correct? Everybody can be, also, all of us, we will die anyway. The Lord, he yeah. says, that Jesus, our Lord, he said, let the dead bury the dead. We are walking dead people, my friend. But the question is, there's death and there's life. And the life is the coming life with Jesus is what we care for. This life is temporarily. It's just a short journey. You don't, you know, you, yesterday you are born. Today you are adult. Tomorrow you are a growing with a gray hair. A, a week after you are dead. This is how life is. So don't worry. Jesus says, don't worry about those who destroy their body. Worry about those who destroy your soul. And today your soul is saved. Your soul is giving you security. You are secure in your soul. The body is going to perish. Thank you, CP. Thank you, my friend. God bless you. Thank you so much. And I'm honored to talk to you today. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. I'm going. I'm going to go to sleep, and I'm going to wake up tomorrow, and 
I'm gonna read. I start I'm gonna read start um, from the book of John. Uh, the new gospel. Yeah, start from the book of John, and then choose whatever you want, and take it easy in reading, and try to understand, and try to live the verses, not only read the verses. We don't care for memorizing. We care for living the word of God. For God's words is a life. For He is the word of God. So live the word, not only read the word. Don't memorize the word. Live them. Be part of the story. Be part of Christ. Be part of His message. Be part of His book. For your name is written there, and today it is written. Anything you want to add, Uthman, before we go? Uh, like, I don't know how, how to explain it, but it feels like, I don't know how to explain what I'm feeling, man. It, it feels really amazing. I'm so happy for you, Uthman. Well, feel free to contact me anytime. If you have a I, questions, I will be happy to hear you. I'm not going to keep you longer. I'm so sorry for calling you, Mr. I'm so sorry for calling you, Mr. Israel. No, no, that problem. was very bad. No problem. It's okay. I understand. All Muslims call me names. They insult me for you know. It's okay. And the Lord, He says, it's a blessing for you to be insulted. No problem. I am insulted because of His name. No problem. It's a blessing for me. You did not do any harm. You gave me a blessing. It's all right. And look what happened. The Lord, He blessed me more by your call to me. I'm blessed. You are blessed. All of us we are blessed by having you. So, my friend, thank you. Thank you for being with us. I will let you now go. Thank and, you, CP. And I hope, I hope I will hear from you more good news in the future. Take care. Thank you, CP. I just want to say one more thing, okay? All right. Jesus is the way and, and the truth I mean, and the life. I mean to that. I mean to that. Take care, my friend. Take care. God bless you. Thank you, bro. Thank you, CP. Bye -bye. All right. And now don't worry about the dog you have at home or your neighbor. I don't know if your neighbor, maybe it's your neighbor. Because in Islam, dogs is haram. Unless it's a guardian dog. Allah will punish you. And I think it's a guardian dog, right? So maybe because it's a guardian dog, you have it. Islam is religion of phobia. Dogs is haram. Music is haram. But the breastfeeding for adult is halal. One night stand is halal. Go into the house of your son and flirt with the wife is halal. But the music is haram. Breastfeeding for adult is halal. Short skirt is haram, brother. But looking at legs is okay. So I want to say thank you guys for being here. May the Lord bless you. And those who download the video, feel free to download it. As you know, I don't keep my videos for long. I will keep it maybe for a day or maybe less. Download the video, cut the part you want, keep the part you want, or keep it all as you as you wish. But I think it's very long to load all this. I think it's like six hours. Yeah, almost six hours. So I want to I want to say thank you all for being here. I wish I can stay longer. Uh, but uh, really, you know, I should not be staying that long, as you know. Uh, but God is good. God is good. Thank you. May the Lord bless you all. And that I will see you soon again. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And today, a new soul being saved by his name, the Messiah. So we are thankful for his name. We are thankful for his blessing. We are thankful for bringing this man to call us. For a happiness will be in the kingdom of God. For one soul is saved, the Lord said. This is how much he loved his children. A happiness in the kingdom of God. For one soul is saved. Not million, one soul. So my friend, today we have a happiness. And we pray every day there is a happiness in the kingdom of God for more soul to be saved. Thank you. God bless you and see you soon again. This is your humble brother, Krishna Prince. Wish you a good night and good day. Take care.